Back to Iverwind Stadium in Hamilton, Ontario. The Blue Bombers of Winnipeg take on the Grey Cup champion Hamilton Tiger Cats. And it is a chilly November day here in Hamilton. As you take a look at the temperature here, it is four degrees Celsius. The wind is whipping. There's a little bit of a chill factor in the air. And again, you have a look at the conditions that we're facing here at Iverwind Stadium in Hamilton as the Thai Cats get set for the Blue Bombers. Upstairs now to Chris and Chris. And you wonder if those conditions will be critical and decisive today. Dave Ritchie wanted to win the toss. Winnipeg did not. Ritchie, of course, remembering the 54-yarder that beat him here two years ago when he was the head coach of the Montreal Alouettes. Dave Ritchie back in the playoffs after missing last year. Ron Lancaster here for the 10th consecutive year. And he says, He's not sure there's any reason why his club can't repeat, although he acknowledges they are not favored to do so as we begin the postseason in the year 2000. How about the keys, well, Mr. I think, Walby? I think, obviously, if you're Winnipeg, don't be one-dimensional. you got to get Corey Philpott involved. You have to have a running attack. On defense, muzzle McManus. Don't give him a steady diet. Come after him. He really has been sharp of late. Don't let him find that playoff magic again. For Hamilton on offense, return, return to glory. And what I mean by that is go back to what got you here. Get back the confidence level. Spread the ball around. Around. Remember where you're from and what you're about. On defense, crush the comfort zone. Right now, Kahari Jones is as comfortable as he's been all year. You've got to get after him. You've got to attack him. You cannot let him sit back there and throw the football. There's Kahari Jones. He won his first game as a starter against the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And now his first start in the postseason. He really closed out the year strong. 16 touchdown passes, four interceptions in the last six games. Well, I mean, only 31 touches, second to Dickinson. And of course, this guy, we know all about him, Chris, the magic man, Danny McManus. He just finds a way to get it done in the playoffs. He's been here before. He knows what it's all about, and he's ready to get it done today. Of course, he missed a couple of games with a hamstring problem late in the year, which coincided with the five game losing streak for Hamilton. He sports the shiner, suffered a couple of weeks ago in BC, says his reads are sharp again, but he has not been delivering the football as effectively as we've seen in the past. Well, he was, re you know what, we were reflecting yesterday and he was laughing. He says, you know what, I'm ready. This is what it's all about. 18 games are over. It's a new season. Troy Westwood to kick it off. Tony Aiken set to return it. And we're underway in the Eastern semifinal in Hamilton. And Aikens is nailed at the 36-yard line and already tempers spilling over. Both coaches have been preaching composure and no unnecessary penalties. And fortunately for the combatants, no flag on the play. That's a good way. Let them get, you know, let them get their adrenaline out right now. Right now they're on the high twitch fibers. Right now they're quick twitch. They just so excited right now. Now they got to learn to control that excitement. Well, Danny McManus, we saw him go on a roll last year as the postseason wore on. However, in the first two playoff games, just one touchdown pass for McManus last year. First play of the game, and McManus looks for Mike Morreale. And Morreale is forced out by Brandon Hamilton at the 45-yard line, and a gain of eight on the initial play for Danny McManus. Well, the offense, Danny McManus, Ronald Williams, Archie Amerson, we'll see a lot of him. Moore is a slot back, the receiving crew. Corey Grant, will he have a breakout day today? Flutie, Morreale with the catch, and Andrew Grigg at the outside. Carl Coulter, Brown and Burns at the guards. Big Dave Hack and Dittman at the tackles. An unnecessary roughing penalty against Ronald Williams. And again, this was much discussed yesterday. Teams avoiding penalty problems. And right from the get-go, Williams is flagged. And the ball comes back to the Hamilton 30-yard line. Well, this is something you just can't have right now. Great to be excited. Oh, great to have that enthusiasm. But you got to control it. It's controlled aggression, controlled violence. 211 yards and penalties for Hamilton the last time they met Winnipeg. So it's second down. McManus steps out of the pocket, looks downfield. 
intended for Morreale. Looked like he had his arm hooked by Marcus Washington. No marker on the play. Well, running right toward the referee. He definitely thought Morreale that he had a penalty against Marcus Washington. There, no flag thrown. They're going to let him play right now. Here's the defensive line. It's going to have to get after Mac. McField getting a start. Alfred Payton, Benny Goods at the end spot. The linebackers, McGriggs, a former Hamiltonian, Wickman, Clark, Ron Warner, and of course, the secondary. Tom Europe, Donaldson, Nash at the halfbacks, Jerron Bolden, Mr. Excitement, and Brendan Hamilton at the quarterback positions. Loss of down on the penalty. It is third down as Osbaldiston puts it away. Winded is back, and here's flight 87. Albert Johnson is back for Winnipeg. He missed last week with the knee problem. And he's cut off at the 35-yard line, a four-yard return after a 49-yard Paul Osbaldiston punt. And Kahari Jones leads the Winnipeg offense out for the first time in the postseason in four years. And you know, he just likes to sit back and throw the ball. One of the things that Kahari loves to do, though, is go deep. And Chris, when you've got a receiving crew like he does, boy, there's no reason not to go deep. It's been a big play team all year. 47 plays of over 40 yards, but only three against the Tiger Cats. Miller, the fullback in motion, leading Philpott to the right side, and he bursts across the 40 for seven to the 42-yard line. Oh, I just love the way they do this. I tell you what, Kahari Jones, Philpott, Wade Miller, converted linebacker with a great block on O'Shea in that first running play. That's the way to get it done. The receiving crew, Stiegel, Simon, Johnson, and Gordon. This is excitement, as you say, lethal weapon four, and an underrated offensive line. Dave Van Conan, Lazio, McNeil, Elwin Eby, and Mudge at the tackle. Second and three after the carry by Philpott, who gets the ball again, tries the other side, and is nailed. Joe Montford is there, and if Hamilton has a big game defensively, we'll be calling his name on a regular basis. You know you're going to be calling number 53, Joel Lightning Montford's name. You can see him lining up right there. Wilkes is going to go outside. He just beats the block. Now, we talked about Wade Miller. First running play, does a great job of chopping Mike O'Shea. Gets him down. Little different story when you're going against number 53, Joel Lightning Montford. No gain for Philpott, third and three, Westwood in, and he's done a fine job replacing the injured Bob Cameron. But into the wind today, not a good kick. Aikens got crossed up with Juhas, who took the ball. Just a 28-yard punt, two on the return. Hamilton back on offense when we come back. 46-year-old Bob Cameron not in the lineup because of a back problem. It's amazing. Troy Westwood has put up identical numbers to Cameron this year since taking his spot. However, this guy is as good as it gets kicking into the wind. Forget what wind is the biggest thing, as you say, Chris, but you know what it is? The best bad weather kicker in the league for a number of years. He knows how to drop the point of the ball when he kicks. That's what he'll tell you. He angles it lower to cut through the wind, much like a, uh, a hood ornament. Well, will the Bombers miss Bob Cameron today in the critical punting game? Just a 28-yard punt by Westwood. Hamilton with a first down at their own 43. Short drop for McManus. And there's Corey Grant, last year's top rookie in the East. Short gain. Grant has been suffering with the sophomore jinx in 2000. Well, remember, this guy had knee surgery done on both his knees in the offseason. Came back this year, as you say, has suffered from the sophomore jinx. But you know, he's only one play away from breaking, and every time he catches, still got great speed. They just haven't really gone to him deep as they like to do. Six yards for Grant, second and four. As we look for the initial first down of the game. Movement on the line, Peyton jumped. Amerson, the pass over his head incomplete, but it looks like Winnipeg will be flagged for offside. Alfred Payton trying to jump the gun a little bit, working against Seth Dittman, number 64. Just got caught by the Cadence. Offside, Winnipeg 56, first down. Alfred with 117 career sacks. 
Well, you know, they say he maybe takes plays off sometimes, but I tell you what, this guy's one of the best pure pass rushers there is. He just finds a way to get it done. So the penalty gives Hamilton a fresh set of downs at the Tiger Cat 54. Williams was the lone setback up the middle. Ronald Williams crashing down inside the Winnipeg 50. Nice job of that offensive line opening up a hole. You know you got to get number 24, Ronald the Tank Williams, involved in this football game early. Just a great job of giving him a seam and letting the big man do the rest. Nobody hits him until he gets into the linebacking section on that defense. Number two rusher in the Canadian Football League this year behind only Mike Pringle. Dave Ritchie, the opposing coach, says after Pringle, Williams is the best running back in the CFL. Second down, three yards. They go back to Williams. And that last surge should move the sticks. Hamilton brings in double tight. They bring in a couple of the big boys. Go double tight end. Not going to fool anybody. Run the ball, hand it off, and as you say, Ronald Williams stretching, trying to get to that first down marker. We're going to see a measurement. He thinks he's got it. We'll have to wait for the official measurement. Williams, 115 yards, one of three 100-yard games as he gets the first down against Winnipeg, including that 70-yard romp you talked about. Well, you can see number 50 at the bottom of your screen, Pascal Chiron, the rookie coming in there, playing that tight end position, loving his opportunity, Chris, to get some playoff action. Tie Cats moving the football on the ground with the wind at their back here in the opening quarter. Williams again, left side, finds a hole. Finally, Brandon Clark got him around the ankles. Well, you know what? They're running right at him. They're not trying to be tricky. They're just going straight at him. Again, the double tight end system, lining a guy in there, Verbeek, 94. They got two tight ends. Just going to take a step to the right, get a man on a man right there. You can see Ditmo did a great job of taking Ryland Wickman, number 55, the middle linebacker, out of the play, allowing that opening to happen. He came up just short, so free down for Danny McManus, second in about a foot. They'll stay on the ground. Williams with the first down as he gets to the Winnipeg 33. And again, tempers start to flare. And Lamar McGriggs was in the middle of it, number 36, a former tie cat who was with the Cats in their Grey Cup game last year. Well, you take a look. Here they come. Here he comes, number 60. Watch these guys right there. Hat, look at that. Driving them right down to the ground. Oh, you got to like that. That's the way to get on the defense. Let them know who's boss early. And as you say, they're going to stay with this formation. It's double tight, Chris, because it's working right now. Certainly is. First down. Back to Williams. And this time, he is nailed at the line. Ryland Wickman with the big hit. Ryland Wickman read that well from the Mac position, the middle linebacking position, flows down the line of scrimmage, meets Ronald Williams, and takes him down after a short gain. He wants to cut it in. Now he turns it. Now there's 55. Nice job. Wrapping him up, wrapping up. But watch the leg drive here, people. Ronald Williams refuses to be brought down and still twists away and picks up a yard. We're six and a half minutes into the opening quarter. Williams has five carries, 23 yards, and it's second and nine for the Tiger Cats. Four receivers went right, they look left, and Williams can't hang on. Nice read by Danny McManus. He had the one when he wanted right there. Ronald Williams sneaking out of the backfield, just coming inside underneath the linebacker. Lamar McGriggs, unfortunately, can't squeeze the football. And Paul Osbaldison will come on to try about a 37-yard field goal, Chris. Osbaldison did not miss from inside 40 this year. 32 for 32. That's an amazing stat. It will be from the 38. And it will be good. And the Tiger Cats draw first blood in this Eastern semifinal. 3-0 Hamilton. Montreal waiting for the winner of this in the East Final. There were the final standings in the East, and the Bombers came on strong. They won four of their last six. Well, the Tiger Cats lost five of their last six, so 
Dave Ritchie and Ron Lancaster took different paths to get to this game. Well, absolutely. I mean, uh, Ronnie Lancaster, kind of a troubled year this year, but they knew they won early, and I gave them enough points to get here in the end. And obviously, Dave Ritchie, the opposite, had the win late to get here. And the Bombers are operating against the wind in this opening quarter. And Harry Jones swings it out, Phil Pop. Mike O'Shea is there, and a sure tackle by the All-Canadian linebacker. What a nice job. I mean, here's a guy, Mike O'Shea, one of the toughest guys I've ever seen play in this position. You know, he's almost had a rebirth. He played a lot of Mac linebacker last year. This year, he's back to the weak side linebacker, which means he's going to get a lot of this, a lot of the back out of the backfield. He's got to cover him. Now, look at the speed. I mean, Corey Philpott's no slouch, but he makes up the ground. And a sure tackle, as you say, Chris. Native of North Bay limits the game to three. It's second and seven, Winnipeg. Play action. Jones with time over the middle, and there is Milt Stiegel with a first down catch for the Bombers at midfield. What a receiver he is, number two in the league in 2000. Well, Mill Stiegel does a great job, but I tell you what, look at the protection, look at the time by this offensive line to allow Kahari to sit back there. We know about the fact that Kahari's got the wheels to run, but look at this, this is Joe Montford. Look at Brett McNeil, that's a great job of coming from your left guard to help out the teammates. 18 yards to pick up, first down Bombers at the tie cap 54. Philpott, and an extra lunge to the 48. And you know, you talk to the offensive line of the Bombers, one of the things they're happy about is they're not just going to stand, stay with a standard dive play. What that means is just give the back. They're going to pull. Now watch McNeil. He's going to pull right now and trap and try and get a kick out. That's what you want to do. You want to have a little misdirection, because then you can play off that, break that key. Mahari can do a play action to roll opposite. Six yards for Philpott, who had 92 last week in the playoff clinching win against Edmonton and a pair of touchdowns. They pick to Philpott, they look outside, and Juroy Simon unable to reel it in. Nicholas Harper was there in coverage. Simon back in the lineup after a separated shoulder in the Toronto game. Well, we just talked about the fact that running the ball allows you to do the play action. Oh, look at this, play action pass. He goes out to the opposite play. Great job of getting Joe Montford down. Simon actually goes up with one hand, which kind of surprises me right now. Now you see Montford coming, Wade Miller chopping him down. You know whatever it takes to take the big man down to allow your quarterback the opportunity to throw that football. I'm a little concerned about Simon only going up with one hand, though we know he's got a bad shoulder. Well, he made that brilliant one-handed catch for a touchdown against Toronto, and that's when he came down, how the injury occurred. Here's Tony Akins, and Akins unable to find the seam up to the 21. 34-yard punt that time into the wind by Westwood, and a six-yard return with 5.39 to play in the opening quarter in Hamilton. Back in the home of the defending Grey Cup champions. As the Hamilton Tiger Cats get set to go on offense, Darren Flutie with one catch today ties Alan Pitts for the all-time lead in playoff game receptions. He was eighth this season in the Canadian Football League in receiving, but a quiet second half in large part to the absence of Danny McManus. Uh, he was really excited to see Danny throw the ball this week. And I mean, Danny's been throwing for a few weeks, but he said Danny's back on. He knows where he wants to go with the ball again. They start at their own 21. McManus to throw, looking for Flutie, incomplete. McManus to Tim for Edward Grigg goes incomplete. Now we talked about the fact Second that, team. you know, Hamilton has got the win, and we've seen almost every attempt that Danny has thrown has taken off on him a little bit. He's overthrown the receiver. He's had the right read. He knows where he wants to go with the football, but the wind has taken that ball after it leaves, leaves his hand. Now the Cats have had success on the ground, but do you think with the win, they feel a little pressure to put more than three points on the board here in this opening quarter? Oh, definitely. I think we want to air it out, try to find a rhythm, and that's what he's doing right now. He's going to keep doing it until he finds out just how much he needs to put on that football. Second and 10, looking for Williams, and again, off his hands, incomplete. And it's two and out for the Tiger Cats as McManus unable to hook up with his running back. Well, again, that was on the money, a little low. 
But Ronald Williams, it hits him in the hand. He's got to come up with this catch. It's a second catch, or second throw, excuse me, that he's thrown to Ronald Williams that Ronald Williams has dropped. He's got to have these. These are drive killers, Chris. These are things you want to do. You talk about taking advantage of the win. But when you have that opportunity and the quarterback makes the right read and puts the ball in your hands, don't let him down. Squeeze the football. So just one completion for McManus so far, and it was just a six-yard toss to Corey Grant. Albert Johnson back. The leading all-purpose yardage man in the CFL this year, and a problem for us, Ballston and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers will take over inside the 10. Well, this is just unfortunate. I mean, unbelievable. Now we're going to get an Oscar out there as well. Wayne Weathers flying down. Cummings is going to get called for a penalty on Wayne Weathers, who will win a Gemini or an Oscar for that one. And the flags flew late as a result. But there's a snap. It just goes in. He just looks his eyes away just for a second. Goes off his hand and costly penalty. We talked about both teams having a penchant for blocking kicks, and was that in the mind of Osbaldiston? You know what it might be? You see number 21 right there coming Major in. Major foul. Bolden. Unnecessary roughness. Winnipeg 99. Major foul. Unnecessary roughness. Hamilton 99. First down. And that's a great call by the referee right there, not allowing a little skirmish like that to go one way. That was well away from the mean issue that Osbaldiston is conferring about with Daryl Adrillon. And now Winnipeg with a chance to take the lead. First down just inside the 10. Looking for Stiegel, or was it Gordon? It falls incomplete. Well, that ball did not go where Kahari wanted it to go. He had Milt Stiegel. He, he knew where he was going to go. He sits back here, gets good protection. You can see it goes over there. Kind of a mix-up. You see Gordon and Stiegel right close in the same proximity. Steinhauer with tight coverage on Robert Gordon, and Gordon thought it was too tight. <laughs> he always will. So it's second down. And goal. Jones into the end zone, overthrows Stiegel. And again, a couple of receivers in the same vicinity. Corey Philpott was in the back pocket of Stiegel. Absolutely, they release Corey Philpott, put him down the middle of the field. Stiegel tries to swing into the middle of the field. They end up, he's gonna line up in a slot bag. He's just gonna bring it back inside now. See, he's got his man beat right there. You can see Philpott though, he got a little shot as he crossed the goal line. He ended up in the same area as Stiegel. They're gonna have to get that straightened out, Chris, because the object is in this game to spread it out, to put the defenders in a lot of open space where you have an opportunity to beat them and get some separation. The left footer Westwood from 17 yards out. And this game is tied with 342 remaining in the opening quarter of the East Semi. Tyrell is a member of the War Amps Camp Program. He knows there can be dangers in everyone's neighborhood. He lost his leg in a lawnmower accident. Recently, Tyrell visited the Commonwealth Stadium in Edmonton to present the PlaySafe Award to the Eskimos. Together, they have a message for kids everywhere. Spot the danger. Play safe. The CFL is proud to support the War Amps Play Safe program. Touchdown! Yay! Good job. Play safe. First turnover of the game leads to three points for Dave Ritchie's team. And we're tied at three. You're here, guys! Well, not many third place teams have gone to the Grey Cup. Certainly not in the East. Dave Ritchie took the BC Lions in 94 out of the West, but there's a stat that would indicate that Dave Ritchie's odds of doing it again in 2000. Are... Well, I know we've made it 1988. We were third place. We were 9-9. Nine and nine. We ended up winning our both our playoff games, went to the Cup, and won that really electrifying game over the BC Lions. Westwood. And this is Ronald Williams back at his 25. 
and Williams breaks through. Just lost his footing with a lot of open real estate ahead. And an 18 yard return for the big back of the Tiger Cats. Danny McManus checks back in, trying to get the Tiger Cat aerial attack on track with three and a half minutes to play. He talked about the fact that Flute has got to be a factor. You also got to get Archie Amerson involved in this offense as well, Chris. Amerson had an outstanding first half of the season. And here's McManus looking deep, looking for Tony Aikens, and he drops the ball. Well, we just saw in the last stand or last offensive series by Winnipeg, a lot of receivers ending up in the same zone. That time, we see Tony Aikens, Mike Morielli in the same five-yard vicinity. Very unlike it right now, especially in playoff time. We can see both receivers as the ball comes down right in the same vicinity. Now, every time you have two offensive players there, you're going to have two defensive players there. It's going to be a huge cluster. Really makes it tough for them to come down with the football. Ron Lancaster deployed Aikens against Winnipeg last year, and in one game, he had four touchdown catches, 257 yards, second and 10, out of the backfield. A sure tackle there by McGriggs on Jarrett Smith, and that will force Hamilton into a punting situation again. Smith, a Hamilton native, and a product of Waterloo University. Well, they really like this kid. He's a powerful running back as well, much like Ronald Williams. When he gets the ball, either through reception or carrying it as a running back, he really can make people miss him, or he can run over you as well. So many great high school players out of Hamilton have gone on to the Canadian Football League. And most of them end up with the Tiger Cats. Let's see what Osbaldiston does here. Hunts the ball away to Johnson, who slips in his 14. And he's in trouble, losing yardage on that punt return. The Ticats did a great job against Johnson this year. And Juhas, first man down this time. Uh, Juhas and Rob Hitchcock, the safety. What a great job of getting down there and staying in your lanes. Now he slips. That, oh, sometimes that can go against you. But look, you see 87 fighting off the block of Brandon Hamilton making the play. You know what? A lot of times, Chris, it's the guys that don't get to see regular action that can make really big plays in big games. That's a big play by Juhas. Hit from Vancouver, who scored his first CFL touchdown against the BC Lions in his hometown. He's backed up Winnipeg. Philpott. And Corey Philpott gets across the 15 to the 17-yard line the Bombers positive first down yardage. You know, and you've got a guy like Phil Pot, and you've got the speed that Corey Phil Pot has, you got to put him in different scenarios. Not just stay at the middle between the tackles, and that's what they're doing. They're giving the ball in a pitch, allowing him to either take it outside if they get the hook block, or break it back in. Nice job, he picks up good first down yardage. Second and five for the Bombers. Short drop of fake. And the timing of that pattern seemed to be off kilter, incomplete to G. Roy Simon. Again, wonderful protection, and they're doing whatever is as necessary to allow it. You see G. Roy, not so simple Simon, trying to come back inside and catch the football. Montford's trying to work, trying to get the pressure. That one maybe just pushing him in there. But allowing Kahari just enough time to sit back there and find the receiver. Ball a little underthrown or behind. But again, we're seeing the quarterbacks, Chris, making the right decisions, just having a problem delivering the ball where it should be. Now Troy Westwood has a problem as he stands at his own two. Looking into that wind. Here comes the rush. He got it away. And that hit a, a wall and just took a right turn. Well, I don't know how Sean Woodson, number 17, missed that. He came up, and they're going to have to straighten that out because he came free. We saw earlier in the game Bob Cameron on the sideline talking to the, to the protectors to make a straight. They're just going to come straight up the middle right here. Look, and he hesitates. He's waiting for someone to actually block him. Has 17, does not stop, and just takes off. He blocks that, Chris. That was a 19-yard punt. So Westwood fortunate to get it away. And the Tigers.
Bearcats take over at the Winnipeg 36. McManus checking off at the line. Bootleg has Morielli. And a flag goes down. Tom, you're up to safety. Came across and brushed Morielli. Well, if you're wondering about Danny McManus's hamstring, put that in the, in the, in the cookie jar on top because it ain't, there's nothing to worry about. Nobody expects Danny Mac to run play action bootleg, but every time he Forward does it. Interference. Winnipeg 19, first down. He gets to the outside. Alfred Payton totally goes with the play action. Danny Mac gets to the outside. He buys himself the free time he needs. Throws the ball, as you say, and there at the last second, you can see Tom Europe coming over Mike Morreale's shoulder, and the flag is thrown. That looked like a terrific play by Tom Europe. But he did get a hand on the shoulder as he batted the ball away. It almost looked like he tried to climb over Morreale to knock the football. The referee, obviously, right there in this sight, throws the flag. And now a big break for the Hamilton offense. Let's see if they can push it across. Winnipeg had an opportunity earlier. Did not cash in. First and goal from the five. Williams stacked up near the line of scrimmage. Got a yard. He's usually automatic, Ronald Williams. 59 touchdowns in the last four years. He had four in the two playoff games leading to the Grey Cup last year. And remember, Ronald Williams, three touchdowns the last time these two teams met here at Ivor Wynn. So he knows how to put the ball in the end zone. Hamilton just going with a double tight, Chris, trying not to fool anybody, powered in. And mark it at the three, second and goal. Williams again, right side to the goal line. Some of the cats were signaling, but no officials. And now, time is out in the opening quarter. And decision time for head coach Ron Lancaster with it being third and one. And I thought, we'll have to have another look at that later, that Ronald Williams crossed the goal line. Looked like it. McManus still conferring. But we did not see any indication from the officials. We'll change ends. End of 15 minutes of football in the Eastern semifinal. Still tied. Ron Lancaster going for it, third and one. You'd be the judge in the last play. We've got a good look at Ronald Williams and whether or not the ball broke the play. Well, that's the key, Chris. The ball has to cross the goal line. And as you see him stretching forward, you see right there, you freeze it. The helmet is across, but not the football. So, I mean, that's a good call by the referee right there. Obviously, it puts Hamilton in a situation to see head coach Ron Lancaster signaling, go for it. So we have our first big decision of the football game. Third and goal. And it is Williams' touchdown. has scored another major against his old team. And he just refuses to be tackled. I mean, if you really take a look, you're going to see he gets hit. He gets stopped. Now, see, watch right here. Now, he's hit. He's hit at the one-yard line. But his momentum and his force and his will to score will not let him to be brought down, and he takes it into the end zone. He is hit on the one-yard line, and Ronald Williams does the rest. Oz adds the extra point on the 16th touchdown by Ronald Williams in 10 games against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And this is one of those things that if you're gonna take the big tank on, you gotta wrap him up. If that means you gotta take him low, you gotta take him low. Now look, there's a contact right there. But you're trying to take him up the shoulder pad level. You gotta get underneath the big man. Take away what gets him there, and that's his legs. So Hamilton takes a 10-3 lead. And the Bombers now will enjoy in the long quarter 
the wind advantage. We'll see if that can get Kahari Jones and Lethal Weapon 4 on track. And Chris, it's easy to sit up here and second guess, but you got to wonder now, the last time we saw Troy Westwood punt after Winnipeg's offense couldn't move the football, should they have taken a safety? and allowed them to kick off and get better field position or force Hamilton to start deeper in their own end. Take a look at the numbers. Just one first down for the Bombers in that opening quarter. Well, I mean, if that's, you look at that, that's only four for Hamilton. So that's pretty even right now. You look at the passing, 21-12, rushing 17-27. I mean, net yards virtually identical, 38-39. Time of possession, four minutes in favoring or three minutes in favoring of Hamilton. But right now it's turnovers. I mean, Winnipeg had a great opportunity to put some points on and had to settle only for a field goal. Kick into the wind by Osbaldiston, takes a funny hop, and Marcus Howell has the ball. And the Winnipeg native gets across the 35-yard line. One stat we didn't have on the board there was the Troy Westwood average 27 yards. Well, in that first quarter. I know you talked about that, Chris. You talked about what the experience Bob Cameron gives you. And that's definitely what it is. Well, let's see what Jones can do with the wind at his back. Who said this was going to be a high scoring affair? <laughs> well, you know, he loves to throw an air it out, boy, and with the wind, expect to see someone right now. First down from the 36. Play action. Throws Wade Miller, the fullback, out of the backfield. And Chris, he was looking at Wade Miller. The interesting thing that I saw in that play was Orlando Steinhauer leaving his man, Albert Johnson, and coming up, actually reading the quarterback's eyes, seeing him looking only at Wade Miller to hit him in the flat, and coming up to help out Sean Woodson. Straight incompletions for Jones, who looks at second and ten. Stiegel out of the backfield. Jones with time. He'll air it out. And down on the play goes Robert Gordon, who was in double coverage. Well, Shelling and Harper, we've talked about, you know, the coverage factors of Vaughn having to take out Milt Stiegel. Well, here's another great matchup, Harper against Robert Gordon. But as you say, getting a lot of help for number 30, the halfback all-star this year, Chris Shelling. I mean, they got him sandwiched, running man for man. Gordon goes down hoping to draw the penalty flag, but to no avail. Westwood in on third down. And Aikens, the lone man back. Westwood gets away a dandy, and Aikens has it go over his head. Back inside is 10, and the Bombers will drop him there. 59-yard punt, that'll help the average for Westwood. Minus four on the return. 21 years in the Canadian Football League for Bob Cameron, injured. Now, Troy Westwood had a little bit of trouble with the win, but was he getting enough time in the first quarter, Bob? Well, I think he was. The last punt that he kicked into the win was, was pretty tough. They, they came up the middle. They blocked a lot of punts this year, and we've talked about it all week, and, and uh, he did a great job getting the last one off. The other the other two is just a very strong, stiff wind. It's cold, and it, it's tough kicking into it, and uh, it's a big advantage kicking with it. I know you might get to go against that win in the fourth quarter. How about uh, your team's hopes? Do you feel good about this football game? Absolutely. I think this quarter is a big quarter for us. We have the wind in our backs. We got them deep in a hole, and this is when we have to have to put the screws to them. Oh, thanks a lot. Good luck. Thanks a lot, guys. That in mind, key series for the Winnipeg defense: a pass into the turf in front of Mike Morreale. This wind really playing havoc with both quarterbacks. It would appear. Well, oh, absolutely. We know with the wind, the ball will take off on you. And then you got to go on the other side against the wind. You got to gauge it. You might have to put a little extra on it when you're throwing into it. You can just see it's a really, really stiff breeze coming right at you. It's not changing direction much. So you know that when you get the ball, and it really makes the sideline, the wide throws, really play havoc with those. And for a quarterback still trying to regain his timing, it can be doubly difficult. McManus, though, does have an open man and a completion and a first down to Andrew Gray. The Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario native has 11 yards. Well, you gotta like that one-on-one -on -one coverage. 
working against Brandon Hamilton. But this is experience, just taking him to the first down, coming back. Look what he knows exactly where that first down marker is. Steps out, gets pushed out. Now look at here, we talked about this battle. Here it is, it's starting already right now. Hack, throw him down. You know, some offensive lineman, Chris, will just let it go, not him. First down, Ronald Williams, and he ran into a stone wall. Big Benny Goods drives him back. Well, Benny Goods, the 11-year veteran, many standout years as an Eskimo now playing for the Bombers for the last couple, and he gets it done in the middle. Just going to be working, fighting through, spinning, doing whatever's necessary to make the, make the tackle, and he does it there, wrapping up a tough guy to bring down. No gain, Benny Goods, in his 14th playoff game, one of the most experienced of the Bombers. Second and 10. McGrick showed blitz, dropped back into coverage, over the middle, and it's complete. Darren Clooney has the catch. Oh, McGriggs is kicking himself. He looked like he was going to intercept that and take it the other way. Well, I'll tell you what, and this is something that just, just can't teach. Great receivers. I can think of Pitts. I can think of all these guys floating. Look at this. As you say, he's got his hands on the football. That should have been picked. Goes through his hands. But what a concentration by number 82, Darren Flutie, to put one hand up, to cradle it, to bring it down, secure it, and take it. What a big play by the veteran, Darren Flutie. We can see a bomber shaking up on the play. Brandon Hamilton is down getting attention. And McGregs, after that play was over, did the customary practice ritual of push-ups when a defensive back drops what should have been a sure interception. And that just shows you why they like Lamar McGregs, because of the fact he's got great speed, so he can get into that depth as a linebacker, gets into his drops, reads it, finds it, takes it away, and as you say, had the ball not gone through his hands, it would have been another turnover for the Winnipeg Football Club. So Hamilton, who made the tackle on Flutie, still getting attention, and by the way, that catch by Darren Flutie ties Alan Pitts on the all-time playoff list is 75th reception. And Hamilton up. Lamar McGregs getting some attention to his right hand after one that got away. This is why McGregs plays defense and why Darren Flutie is one of the great offensive players <laughs> in the game. <laughs> Couldn't put it any better. But as you go right there, you can just see, he gets both hands on that football. Unfortunately, can't squeeze it, the ball goes up, but what concentration to follow the ball in flight still by Darren Flutie to bring it down and make an immaculate reception again. He just keeps finding ways to do it in the playoffs. And Darren Flutie, fourth all time in receiving overall in the Canadian Football League. Back to Andrew Grigg. Trying to get to that first down stick drilled by Marcus Washington at the 53-yard line. He'll be out after a gain of seven. And you know, the thing is, when Danny had the win, he only completed two passes. While we've seen him complete two, albeit a little lucky, the last one to Darren Flutie, but this one again to Andrew Grigg on the sidelines. Going right after him. They know that Brandon Hamilton's got to sit on three plays, so let's go right to him right now. Second and three for the Cats. Williams stopped up initially. Second surge gets across midfield and a first down for Hamilton. Well, that is it, it's just great surge by the defense, but an even greater desire by the running back, Ronald Williams, not to be denied from getting the first down and keeping this drive alive. I mean, again, he's tackled, he stopped short, but he refuses to be brought down and he just does whatever's within his body to get across that marker. Well, the Hamilton Tiger Cats have moved the football on offense. Enjoying a 10-3 lead as they move into Winnipeg territory and there is Williams again and a flag comes down in the backfield and likely holding against the Cats. Well, you see, big Benny Good signaling the call, and it might go against Chris Burns, but we'll have to wait for the call. Holding. Hamilton 68. First down repeated. 
Well, it's big Dave Hack working against Alfred Payton. And, you know, watching him from up here, I saw it. Alfred tried to slip underneath the block, the punch out block by Dave Hack. And Dave obviously got a little hook on him around his helmet. You're not going to get away with that because the referee is standing right there watching it. Brandon Hamilton is back on the corner for Winnipeg. Lamar McGriggs, we're told, jammed his thumb, but will be back. First and 20. And McManus looking deep. Incomplete, intended for Tony Akins. Rio Wells in coverage. And a nice job of staying step for step with the speedster Tony Akins by number 19, Rio Wells. He sits back there. Puts this ball in a beautiful spiral going through the wind right there. Tony Akins probably wishes he could have that play back because it looks like it almost hit him and he was surprised that it didn't get knocked down by number 19, Real Wells. We talked earlier about the concentration of Darren Flutie catching a tip ball and this one just getting away from number 81, Tony Akins. That's at least three drops, McManus has blemished on his record today and there's a catch by Morreale over the middle. At the 51 of Winnipeg, it will be short of the first down, and Morreale nicked well, on the play. I think both the guys that are involved in that collision are down right now, Lamar McGriggs and Morreale. Morreale got hit from both sides, front, and then got knocked back over it, got up and fell right back down, and there you see number 36, Lamar McGriggs also shaking up on that play. Just a little quick pass over the middle. You can see right there underneath, and it goes back overneath. And Lamar McGriggs was just actually setting himself up to deliver the blow, expecting that Morielli might stay up. As Morielli went down, he kind of got caught up when it went over him. And... Well, McGriggs is up. Morielli remains down, and he took a, a real shot to the upper leg. Well, he most definitely did, Chris. I mean, he's just going to throw it over the middle right now. You can see Tom Europe slips, but as he gets hit, it almost looks like Morielli catches the knee of Lamar McGriggs as he goes over the pile. Like the top Canadian in the Canadian Football League in 1998, and the top Canadian in the 99 Grey Cup game. But you know what? It, this is the difference, Chris. Regular season, I don't care what anybody says. Regular season, you get shook up. It's almost like you have a different life source going on in your body. In the regular season, you get hit like that where you're not going to get up, you may take a few. In the playoffs where you know it's do or die, you basically got to be shot. We pull from this football game. First punt into the wind for Osbaldiston. Averaging 47 and a half yards with the win. Rush was on. Wickman went flying in that pile. And here's Johnson. Albert Johnson dragged down by Musica. Ball on the turf. And the official said play was dead. Cats got on it quickly. 37-yard punt by Osbaldiston. And Winnipeg back on offense midway through the second quarter. Bombers go on offense and fortunate to do so. Take another look at what looked like a fumble by. Well, Mazika comes in there and grabs it. Now, look, you see right there, there's the ball right there. Now, that ball is free. Now, they say there was a whistle, but you listen. Well, I think we can all tell that the ball was out and then the whistle came. Big break for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Let's see if the Bombers can take advantage. The toss, still pot, big speed. Neil as he got across the 40 by the safety, Rob Hitchcock. The flag flies near the end of the play. Well, I always like to say if you got a guy with speed, give him the real estate to run with it. Give him the toss play, they give a good job. He gets to the outside, but unfortunately it's all for naught as it's gonna go against Winnipeg. Holding, Winnipeg 87, before yards gain. Be first down repeated. Albert Johnson. And you, and you know what, Chris, they really never call those plays very often. But you know what? When you're having your running game have success, 
You've got to have the guys downfield. You can see right there, he's just got the hand. He's just grabbing him, trying to hold him, keep him away from the play. So it's a good call. Albert Johnson with the holding call and the game got run by Cody Slopar. So it's first and 20. Back at the Palmer, 20. Here comes Montford. They dump it off to Philpott. Ducked under one tackle and gets the penalty yards back to the original line of scrimmage. Well, that's a nice job. And then, you know what? This kid, Kahari Jones, first playoff start, standing in there. He, I mean, he sees, you can see Monford coming right in there, but he gets rid of that football. Corey Philpott is the last option. But look right here, watch him come inside. This is just a nice job of getting inside the tackle. But Kahari equally adept at getting rid of the football. Second and 10 from the 30. Jones with time, the look downfield, Gordon slipped and couldn't make the play. Orlando Steinauer has enjoyed a good start in his first start of 2000. Well, you know what? I really find this interesting because there is so much respect, and rightly so, given to these receivers of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Coach Lancaster said, you know what? Flat out, these guys can fly. What we got to have is guys that know how to play the football. And that's why Orlando Steinhauer is back in his first game, starting in the playoff game, a game of this magnitude, because he knows how to play the football, Chris. He sees it and reacts when the ball's in flight. Westwood under pressure again, gets it away. And it's Aikens shaking a couple of tackles up to the 50-yard line. There is a flag down after the 45-yard punt by Westwood. And a 15-yard return by Tony Aikens. Against Wayne Weathers of Winnipeg declined. Dave Ritchie's youthful squad out of the gate slowly in this Eastern semi. Well, remember, this is the CFL and anything can happen. Lots of time left. 10-3, quick hitter inside. Flutie and Harold Nash just got his by the collar. Well, Flutie's gone. Well, I tell you what. Dave Ritchie loves to take chances on defense and go after. Now, what you won't see on his play, you see why Darren Flutie's coming in the middle? The reason he's coming in the middle is because it's vacated. Number 13, the safety, Tom Muir, blitzes on the play. The veteran, Danny McManus, sees it and gets rid of the football. Darren makes the adjustment and a big game. McManus heating up, 15 yards to Flutie, back to the ground, and Ronald Williams. Shakes a couple and down to the 35, close to another first down. And all the momentum right now is with the home side. Uh, the big M is definitely on the Hamilton side right now. What, I, what I'm just seeing right now is just the undeniable deniance of being brought down by this man. Look at him spin. One contact, two contact, keep spinning. Even if it's for an extra yard, he refuses to be brought down. That just picks the rest of your team up. So the Ticats on the move into the teeth of the wind. 5.50 to go. Trying to add to a seven-point lead. And Williams has been the bulk of the offense. Now McManus looking downfield and overthrows Tony Akins. Well, double coverage there. Tom Europe, Real Wells covering the speedster Tony Akins down the side. But, wow, here's Darren Flutie. Yeah, you, you can talk about numbers, but you just can't beat what he's done. Let's take a look. An old, reliable firm, McManus to Flutie in BC in Edmonton. And now with the Hamilton Tiger Cats, two catches today, 76 now in the playoffs. And he moves ahead of Alan Pitts. He'll play next week. You know, that'll be back and forth. McManus incomplete. Morreale back in the game, the intended receiver. And that will bring up third down. Third down. Now the field position is definitely favoring Hamilton right now. I mean, they'll be punting into, into the win, but you can see Oz is going to try the field goal. 42-yarder into the wind here, Chris. 
And remember, Albert Johnson is back, and he has taken a missed field goal for a touchdown and 122 yards earlier this year. So if there's a miss, it was partially blocked, and it'll bounce into the end zone. Johnson surrounded, gives up the single. There's another block kick for Winnipeg. Perhaps the low trajectory needed well, into the win. You know what, Chris, absolutely. Remember, you can't let the ball get up because of the win. But you're going to see as it, you know, Flutie does a nice job. But Bolden, we talked about him earlier. 21 coming in there from the other side, Ron Warner, number 98. Just getting a little piece of that football. It and results in a single point and an 11-3 Hamilton lead. Single point. And you know what? One of the things that may not look like a big thing, but you talked about the fact that Albert Johnson returned 122 yards. What a nice job with those big offensive hoggies getting down and making sure he doesn't take off with that football on the miss. Well, the Winnipeg offense has been sputtering in this first half. Quick hitter. And a completion up near the 44. That's a yard shy of a first down for G. Roy Simon. Again, he had a separated shoulder a couple of weeks ago. And a miracle recovery, really, to get back in the well, lineup. Absolutely. The training staff, Jeff Fisher, and the guys over Winnipeg, wonderful job getting this guy ready to play. But you can see every time he comes up with a football, he's, he's still fearing that shoulder. Larry Jones changing the play. It's second and one. And will he use this? to go deep. Time to throw and looks downfield. Steinauer and Gordon were bumping, but that ball was into the Winnipeg bench. Well, you just can't beat the coverage right now that Steinauer, he's putting a glove over Robert Gordon. Now, we've talked about earlier, they might move Gordon in a little bit to get him away from his coverage. Good protection. You see him sitting back there initially, but right at the end, there it is, Mike Philbrick. Top Canadian on this Hamilton squad delivering a message. So it's third and less than a yard, and Jones needed some help. As that first contact stood him up. Well, that's what they say. Whatever it takes to get across that line, and that means you got to get a little help, a little push from backside, do it. That he does. He initially gets stopped, but the back behind him, Wade Miller and the boys will push. Now you see him, look at the contact, boom. Now there's the rest, Corey Philpott and Wade Miller. Also Wade Miller gets him the necessary yardage. Only the second first down of the game for Winnipeg. Here's Jones, and Gerald Vaughn in coverage against Mitch Stiegel. Uh, a little frustrated with the coverage, thought it was a little too tight. Thought there might have been a flag, but Gerald Vaughn, the man that Coach Lancaster says has the best work ethic on this football club. We know what he can do in special teams. Look at the coverage. And you know that's his forte right there. He's going to play bump and run. He's going to get a shot on you. Let's take a look and see what how kind of protection he's got right here. Right the field, push them over, push them over. Well, Milt has company. Apparently the Hamilton receivers hate even practicing against Vaughn. In trouble is Jones. He gets outside and nearly threw a pick. Nicholas Harper drops the ball. Well, wonderful pressure by Mike Philbrick. Just coming from the middle and chasing down a very elusive Kahari Jones all the way to the outside. Boy, I tell you what, there's some emotion going right now if you're a Hamilton fan, but you got to keep the faith because Winnipeg can still get it done. Big series for the nose tackle, Michael Philbrick. Well, the Eastern All-Star this year, the top Canadian in his squad. I mean, there he is right there. He's number 77. He's just going to keep working around. You know what? If the path to the quarterback means you got to go sideways or lateral sometimes, so be it. But great pursuit angle by him and Mark Word. I mean, you see him right there working, 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 coming around the pile. I mean, Mark Word misses him, and they see he keeps coming. But there's number 77 delivering the final touch, the blow, if you would, to Kahari Jones. Very soft-spoken, off the field, a stockbroker. Well, his favorite movie is It's a Bug's Life, so that ought to tell you a little bit about the character of Mike Philbrick. Like Tony Aikens lost that one or wanted it to get into the end zone, it won't do it. And Juhas has to pick it up at the two-yard line. And so a 61-yard punt 
Or Muzika drawing a crowd there too. Not sure what that's all about. Just wanted to finish the story. I asked Philbrick yesterday about how his personality changes when he gets on the field. And he says, you don't want me behind you in the grocery store checkout line. <laughs> Oh, he's a character. He really is a guy that never has nothing to say. He's always got something to say. Well, Wade Miller and Musica, a couple of great special team players were involved here. And it looked like Miller was trying to get to Musica about something that happened away from the ball. Oh, he's a fireball, that little guy. He's a guy that's got a heart bigger than the size of his body. Big series for the Bomber defense, and Ronald Williams thunders out to the 15. He's nailed. Somebody lost their lid. Well, Jerron Bolden met him head to head, and I tell you what, they'll be making sure that chin strap's really on tight the next time. Huge run for Williams to give Hamilton some breathing room. Well, again, a, a nice job of the offensive line. Look at that hole. Look at the hole. The first guy to make contact is the secondary guy, Jerron Bolden. That means that your offensive line and lead block are doing a great job of creating. Well, take a look at the fake here. I mean, everybody's fooled on this one. Everybody thinks Amerson's getting the ball. Even the cameraman's coming with him. Instead, a first down carry by Williams, who has almost as many yards in this first half as the Winnipeg offense. At the 14, with under two and a half minutes to play in the opening half, back to Williams. And he's tripped up at the 17. Well, nice hole initially opening up, but Lamar McGriggs, 36, he fills it. He just comes in there like a dart. A heat-seeking missile and wraps him. Now, we talked earlier. Where are you going to trip up the big man? you got to take him at the legs. Lamar McGregor shows why you'll have success bringing back or bringing down the tank if you take him low. Yardage, Winnipeg, 58. Williams, 54. Here late in the first half. Second and seven. And Alfred Payton just met up with Williams and makes sure he doesn't add to his total. A nice job of fighting off the block. 56, Alfred Payton coming around, hack, making the play. I mean, he just reads it now. He's just going to come over there. You see him just come through, beating the lead block, wrapping him up, and just holding on for dear life, taking him back. And again, a, a, you know, a real critical series of downs for that bomber defense, Chris, because now you force Paulus Ballas to punt into the win from his goal line. Under two minutes to go. Albert Johnson's waiting for the ball around midfield. So Winnipeg has a chance really to salvage the half here in the final two now, minutes. Now, do you punt or do you give up the two points? And we talked about Westwood maybe doing this earlier in the game for Winnipeg. See if Ozzy does it or decides to try and punt it. And if he does try, is the block on for Winnipeg? He's going to concede. Harold Nash chasing him down to the Back line, you know, two points for the Bombers, you know, it's 11-5. Chris, with 132 left, I think that's a smart call. It really is. You give up two points to Winnipeg, but it allows you to kick off the ball to Winnipeg, have Winnipeg's offense start, you know, start deeper in their own territory. But again, you got to remember, when you're going against either one of these guys, they can each block punts. So, I mean, you're saving yourself from two, not only giving Winnipeg good field position, but the chance of a block. So Ron Lancaster's team now enjoys a six-point advantage, and they will kick the ball off. I think maybe Dave Ritchie didn't opt for it earlier because they, into the wind, had had a pretty good first quarter. Well, absolutely. You know, there's a lot of time left, the 132 left. They're going to get the ball, but as you say, it's time for Winnipeg to start making something happen on offense. Coming up at halftime, Charlie Taft, perhaps the most interested observer, on this game is the Alouettes await a winner. Scott will be in conversation with the head coach of the Alouettes. Mr. Walby will dissect this first half. And I will not promise that the second half will be wide open. <laughs> well, you never know. That's the thing. It only takes a couple passes. Johnson and Howell are deep. 
it will be Marcus Howell. Ran one back against Toronto this year and ran into Clifford Ivory that time. 12 yards on the return. So a chance now for the Bombers to get a positive vibe going into the dressing room. Well, definitely positive vibe. They definitely got to figure a way to, to take advantage or beat or get some separation from the secondary of the Tiger Cats because these guys are doing a real good job of blanketing the receivers for most of this first half. One thing the Cats were wary of yesterday was not giving up the big play. They don't think this is a very patient drive engineer type of offense that Winnipeg runs. Yeah. So far, they've limited the big play. Good protection for Jones across the middle and a catch by Stiegel at midfield. Second catch of the game for Milt Stiegel. Well, five receivers out there right now. You're forcing man coverage. You're forcing them to go one-on-one. -on -one. He's working against one of the better covered guys in the league, number 39, Gerald Vaughn. But Milt Stiegel has got great separation speed. He gets a little bit of an opening, a little bit of separation from Vaughn. Ball's on target. A big first down for this little big offense. 18 yards for Stiegel. Jones again back to work. Looking deep. Looking for G. Roy Simon who drops the ball. This time it's a bomber receiver with a bad drop. And now you just talked about the fact that, you know what, Winnipeg is a big play offense. They're not one of these teams that's gonna march it down the field. Well, we just saw a great play to Stego, but watch G. Roy Simon. Now he's working against Gerald Vaughn again. Now look at his step for step. Now the ball is there to watch. Oh, he's got that football. He has got to come up with that catch. That's just going to haunt you. Let's take a look what happens. Let's take a look at the reaction of Kahari Jones here. Unbelievable. Can't throw that ball any better, Chris. Haven't been any drops by that fine receiving core this year. A critical one there. Second and ten. Jones in trouble with Mark Ward. Nails him behind the line of scrimmage. First time they've really got to Kahari Jones today. Well, you talked all day about Joe Monfort, but the other side, they got a pretty good guy here, Mark Ward. Came over halfway through the year for the Kansas City Chiefs. He does a nice job working. He's going to come from the bottom of your screen right here. Just going to come and work against Dave Mudge. Comes back, throws him, comes back inside, and sacks Kahari Jones. Keeps working, keeps working. Usually the quarterbacks will have that sixth sense, that Spider-Man sense that somebody's coming, they'll try to get rid of the football. Not on that play. Well, Kahari Jones thinking about the one that got away. And Mark Word made sure that Jones didn't get away. Five sacks for Word in a half season. And now Westwood. Akins. And Aiken surrounded at the 18, 27 seconds to go in the first half. Simon doesn't drop this. Winnipeg goes to the locker room with the lead in all likelihood. Well, I mean, you can take a look. Here's what happened this year, two seasons in one, the first 12 games, eight and four, last six games, one and five. We talked about earlier that obviously Hamilton knew they, they, they won a lot of games. They got 16 points in the first 12 games. They had enough to get into the playoffs. Winnipeg is a different scenario. They're a team that basically had to win at the end of the season to get into the playoffs. So two very different routes to get here. But it doesn't matter how they got here. They're here now, and it's going to come down, Chris, to 30 minutes and 27 seconds to determine a winner. Six-point lead for Hamilton. Williams across the 20, short gain. And a timeout called by Winnipeg. They want to force Paul Osbaldiston to punt one more time into the well, win. Well, absolutely. That's a smart call. Benny Good's making the call right there. He says he stopped him for a short gain, two yards. Puts Hamilton's offense in a second and long situation. Now, Hamilton will have to put the ball up in the air. If they don't, they're going to have to punt unless they can break Ronald Williams through. But, I mean, obviously you're looking at the, you know, the odds are. 
getting the ball back with maybe a little bit of time to try a long field goal. Remember, Troy Westwood has kicked a 54 yarder this year. Well, he's the loneliest guy in the park right now, G. Roy Simon. Well, as you say, that was right there. He had it in his hands, and it would have been a big play by the Bomber offense. Back to Williams. Drilled back on the hit by McGriggs. There are 17 seconds left, and uh, they'll likely just run the clock down and, and play out the clock without a punt. Take a knee. Go into the locker room and discuss what's happened on both sides. You know, the wind clearly, Chris, excuse me, has been a factor in this first half, but the Bombers have to feel good about their defensive play. Well, absolutely. They're only giving up one touchdown. But, I mean, I think that you saw that things were starting to happen for the Hamilton offense. For Winnipeg to be successful in the second half, they're going to have to get some, not only continuity on that offense, but they, they can't afford to have drops, as we saw by Simon. Big game breakers. So Danny McMahon is smiling about a six-point lead as we head down to the sidelines and join Scott. Thanks very much, Chris. Here's Ron Lancaster of the Tiger Cats. You said you respected the receiving core of Winnipeg. You held them in check throughout most of the first half. Are you pleased with that? Well, yeah, sure. I mean, they haven't scored a touchdown. I'm pleased with the job the defense has done. Uh, their defense has done a good job. We just need to move the football a little bit more. Ronald Williams carried it for you pretty well in the first half. Uh, what do you want to key on in the second? Same thing. He's going to get the ball a lot more. Well, we need to come out and dominate the second half and on the ground and make them uh, keep them off balance as to what we're going to do. Ron, thanks. Good luck. You bet. Ron Lancaster, the Hamilton Tiger Cats, the Grey Cup champions, are leading the Winnipeg Blue Bombers 11 to 5 after one half of play. The semifinal, the CFL on CBC, will continue from Iverwind Stadium in just a moment. The wind is a factor here in Hamilton. Troy Westwood of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers found that out in particular. The Tiger Cats lead 11-5 after the first half. Well, the Montreal Alouettes were 12-6 this season. They have the bye this weekend and will take on the winner of this in the East Semi next week in Montreal. Standing by is the coach of the Alouettes, Charlie Taft, from his home in Montreal. And Charlie, I hear you're not eating any chips this year in preparation for the big game. Is that right? Well, yeah, I, I kind of uh, choked on my chips last year, so I said I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't have any before the game. How's your football team, Charlie? Uh, I know you changed your tack a little bit, and uh, you said to them you can have voluntary workouts, but you stay here in Montreal. How are they in terms of preparation? Well, I think the most important thing at this time is having the bye week is to uh, let your players rest and, and, and get, get feeling better after a long 18-week uh, season. So. After last year, I didn't feel the two practices we had in the off week were productive. So uh, this year we changed up a little bit. Uh, we didn't have actual practice. We had some uh, conditioning workouts. Uh, a lot of the players have come by and studied film. And uh, uh, I know I've been working out lifting weights and those things. So we'll, we'll start back in earnest here tomorrow uh, with practice. You didn't have a great week against the Toronto Argonauts last week. Uh, how is the momentum? Uh, do you anticipate that as being any kind of a problem once you start against either Winnipeg or Hamilton? No, I don't think so. I, I think there's three seasons. We've played two of them. We've had the, uh, the preseason, the exhibition season, then the regular season where we won two-thirds of our games and, and uh, positioned ourselves to be where we want to be now in the playoffs. And now the third season starts uh, for us tomorrow uh, in preparation for the uh, winner of this game here. But uh, I don't think last week has anything to do with uh, how we'll play in the playoffs. We, we played a lot of people. Uh, we got a chance to look at some players. And uh, now the real work starts uh, for us uh, uh, tomorrow in preparation for this Eastern Final. I know you want to be politically correct, and you wouldn't want to choose an opponent to your liking, but uh, what do you think of this football game between Winnipeg and Hamilton and the dangers that both teams present to you? Well, both teams obviously are good football teams. We've had close games this year with each of the each of the teams playing right now, and uh, each presents a little different problems. Uh, 
they got a very explosive receiving core in, in Winnipeg that, uh, uh, you know, has potential to strike from anywhere on the field. Uh, they've been pretty solid against the run. The run defense has been good. Uh, Hamilton, on the other hand, got an experienced quarterback in Danny McManus, uh, which is obviously, I think, big in, the, in this in the playoff season. Uh, they have a very good defense uh, as they're playing right now. Uh, Orlando Steinauer back and covering those receivers at Winnipeg pretty good. So whoever we play, uh, we know it's going to be a great football game. We just have to focus on us and our preparation and make sure we're the better team next Sunday because we're only going to get one opportunity, as we know. Charlie, thanks for, uh, very much for doing this. Good luck to the Alouettes and stay away from the chips. Thanks, Charlie. <laughs> okay, Scott. Thank you. Charlie Taff of the Montreal Alouettes. Let's send that up to Chris and Chris, guys. Well, Scott, there's good news and bad news for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Uh, the bad news is they have not won a game this year when trailing at halftime, but this is still a very winnable game. It's a six-point game, and if stats were really going to you know, dictate what was going to happen, then Winnipeg should just pack up and go to the airport right now. There's no way. What they have to do is get into the locker room and make some adjustments, but they also have to make some plays. Remember, this is playoff. It's a one-game deal, and the team that makes the big plays usually is the team that's going to win. And I mean, we've seen some big plays happen in the first half already, Chris. Well, we talked about the danger of punt blocks in this game, and maybe that contributed to the mishandled snap by Paul Osbaldiston. It resulted in three points for the Bombers. Well, absolutely. But, I mean, then you got guys that are going to make the plays for you, and Danny Mack goes over, almost picked up by Lamar McGregs, but Darren Flutie, you know, always knows how to corral those footballs, makes a big play, and that's what it's about. Unfortunately for Winnipeg, G. Roy Simon unable to make the big play. Well, and this is right. I mean, he goes there. He gets a separation. The ball is right in his hand. And, I mean, that would have took him inside the 20-yard line. That's what this is about. You've got to make the big plays when they present themselves. Because, I remember, when you look at the film tomorrow and you haven't won this game, boy, it's just going to, you know, it's just sticking a, a knife in your heart. Boy, Hamilton defense holding them to 72 yards of offense as we rejoin Scott. Thanks very much, fellas. It's 11-5 for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Ronald Williams has the touchdown for the Tabbies. The East Semi will continue on CBC. Here's Dave Ritchie of the Bombers trying to shake your receiving core loose. Uh, did you see some progress in that regard? Well, it's not bad. Uh, we got to make the plays when they throw the ball to them, and uh, and we didn't we didn't catch the ball down here when he was flat wide open. So. That kind of hurts, but uh, basically our offense has got to stay on the field. Our defense is out there way too long, and uh, you just got to make some plays. Dave, okay, thanks. Good luck. All right. Thank you. And you heard from Ron Lancaster earlier and how satisfied he was with the first half performance of his defense. Well, both defenses are playing pretty good right now, Chris. I mean, that's obviously a dick of a score, 11 to 5 right now. It's still anybody's game with 30 minutes to go. And as we say, we've only had one turnover in the first 30 minutes. And it'll be interesting to see if that becomes a factor in the second half. And Dave Ritchie's team has the win in the third quarter. Hamilton won the toss and opted for the win in the fourth quarter, which was a bad omen for Dave Ritchie when the game began. Here's the top rookie in the East, Albert Johnson, has not been able to get loose so far this afternoon. Nothing on that return. Let's check the numbers from the first 30 minutes. Well, obviously, from the first quarter to the second quarter, a big change. Hamilton, obviously, with the big engine first down. Passing, net yards. Again, only one turnover. We talked about that. For me, the whole thing is stats are stats, but I think it's just the ability of both teams to make big plays. Winnipeg had some opportunities. They dropped some key balls. And obviously, Williams on the other side on Hamilton really grinding it out on the ground right now, making some big plays in that offensive backfield position. If you've joined us late, wind is a major factor this afternoon. Gusting, swirling. Nahari Jones back to throw over the middle. Tip went into the hands of Robert Gordon. And a big play to start this second half for the Bombers up to their own 50. And I was just going to add, Chris, that wind shouldn't be that big a factor for Winnipeg. They've got plenty of experience in that regard. Well, you know, that's right. When you're used to playing at home in Winnipeg with the wind, I mean, it's always playing, and it's a swirling wind in Winnipeg, so you, 
You never know which direction it's going to come for. But I tell you, Kahari does a nice job. He sits back here, gets enough time to throw the football. It's another, almost indicative of what we saw Lamar McGriggs do. Tips the ball. This time it's Warren Mazika, who's in place of the injured Willie Fells. Tips the ball. Robert Gordon, good concentration on his end, coming up with his first catch of the ball game. Nicholas Harper shaken up in the rookie corner. We'll have to sit out for three plays. Here's a, a weapon that has not been utilized yet, though. Robert Gordon, who was fourth in the league, 89 catches. He was fifth in receiving yardage at 1,395. It's quite a one-two punch with Stiegel and Gordon. We just haven't seen it yet today. Absolutely. He had his big game last time. These two teams met with seven catches over 120 yards. Oh, great fake. And Kahari Jones down to the 45-yard line. Well, he throws the defense there. Well, we know what Kahari can do through the air. He loves to throw the football. Doesn't take off as much as people would expect because he does have good speed. He had his best game running with the football against Hamilton when he rushed for 84 yards. So he can do some damage on the ground. He just does a little play action, pulls it himself, and as you see, fools everybody on that Hamilton defense. 15 yards the pickup. They're in the Hamilton territory at the 45-yard line. First down, pitch, Philpott. There's a hole in Corey Philpott. Gets close to seven more. Four carries is not enough in the first half with a guy like this. You better put the pigskin in his hand a few more times this second half. I mean, he's got the speed to do some damage to you. Give it to him, as we talked about. Let him go to the outside, inside. Just a toss play, nothing fancy. He cuts it back. He's got the great change of direction, and he'll make your defense pay. Second and two. Full pot again, first down. Winnipeg operating against a Hamilton defense that led the league in seven categories. We're top two in 13 of 25 defensive categories monitored by the CFL. Well, you know, I mean, Hamilton is number one against the run. We saw success early by Hamilton running the ball with the win. Now Winnipeg has got the win. They're running the ball. But this is a big quarter for Winnipeg. They got to put some points on the board. Chris, three first downs in the second half matches their first half totals. Here's Jones under pressure from Montford. And he goes down at the 30 under O'Shea, just as Montford was sizing him up. Nice job by the secondary covering the receivers, this dangerous group of receivers, because once Kahari gets outside, it becomes a question. Does he run or does he throw the football? As a result, you might see some of the secondary take a chance coming up to put the stop, the kibosh on Kahari. Nice job of staying with the receivers, allowing the pursuit, O'Shea in this case, to come up with the play. Jones got three, it'll be second and seven. Dave Ritchie has likened his style to a young Tracy Ham. We've seen a little bit more of that already early in this second half. Second and seven. Jones looking for Stiegel. Touchdown, what a catch as he outdueled the defender and pulls it in. Well. Chris, we talked about the fact that if Winnipeg wants to win this game, it's a game of big plays. Milt Stiegel with the biggest play of the year to date, climbs the ladder and keeps the concentration and catches the ball. I mean, don't give up on the football if it's deflected. He comes back up and then he comes back down with it. You know what, everybody knows that he's the MVP on this team. He just showed you why he is the most outstanding player. It's guys like that that have to pick it up, and he did it there. Tied for the league lead in pass reception touchdowns this year with Travis Moore and Kez McCorby. Playoff games, you expect the big men to come up big, and Milt Stiegel has here early in the second half. Milt Stiegel has given Winnipeg the lead here, just shy of four minutes into the third quarter. Well, what a nice job working against Chris Schilling. Little shot by Ivory. Now it's one-on-one. -on -one. Now what I like about this, look, they're both fighting for the football, but Milt Stiegel refuses to be denied. He keeps working, climbs up, climbs the ladder, goes on top, and comes down with a great catch. And what a change of momentum for the Bombers who needed to make a big play to stay in this game or get back into the game, now have a one-point lead. 
You could hear the conviction in the voice of Kahari Jones, the leader on that Winnipeg team, saying they're going to win this. Good start to the second half for the Bombers, and here's Aikens for the Tiger Cats. And Tony Aikens finds room along this near sideline up to the 49-yard line. 46-yard return by Aikens. Let's take one more look at Jones to Stiegel. Wakahari, great protection. Look at that ball. With the wind right on time, and he does a nice job of coming up. Coming down with the big catch, the big touchdown to put him ahead in this game. But it all starts with protection. He sits back there. Let's take a look at his reaction after the ball is caught. I mean, he is pumped. He is pumped. Well, a perfect drive to start the second half. We saw Jones on the run. He found Robert Gordon and then went to his payoff man, Milt Stiegel. And now McManus will try to answer back. In trouble, a Benny Goods brings him down. Goods with the sack back at the 42. Run a little bit of a twist action. Bring the Mad Dog, the Middle Dog Blitz. Rylan Wickman, number 55, coming in there. Benny Goods loops around, wraps up Danny McManus. And you don't see Danny Mack go down too often, but he's forced to hold on to the ball because of the coverage of the secondary of the Bombers. See, he pulls it back down. A nice job of the secondary to stay with the receivers of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Loss of six, second and 16. McManus looking for Emerson. Incomplete. Two and out. For the Hamilton offense, first time in the second half. Well, the Bomber defense again doing their job, forcing this punting situation by the Hamilton Tiger Cats. You know what, that probably was the first pass we've seen Danny McManus throw toward Archie Amerson. Now he's a guy that is classified a game breaker. They got him listed as a running back position, but we all know, everybody in the league knows, he's basically a glorified slot back. He'll come out of the backfield and get his coverage and look for mismatches with him. They got to get the ball to that guy as well to make a difference in this football game. Osbaldiston with relative success against the win, 37-yard average. And a fine kick here. Backpedaling was Johnson. Lost his footing and submarines to the 33. Winnipeg back on offense. And we return. The marquee attractions and they combined on the last scoring drive for Winnipeg. Well, absolutely. Stiegel and Robert, the roadrunner Gordon, I mean, these guys get it done. I mean, obviously, Gordon with the with what I call the key catch in that drive, taking a deflected pass and making a great catch in the first down. And of course, the big play, Milt Stiegel going over shelling for the touchdown. And you can see Kahari all excited there, but his also took off on a little bootleg scramble that got the ball rolling on that drive as well, Chris. It's lethal weapon four, and those two are Gibson and Glover. There you go. First down. Jones with some time, and now flush. And he's just tripped up by O'Shea. Big tackle by Mike O'Shea. But close to a first down for Jones. But absolutely. Pulls the ball down, as you say, had Mike O'Shea not made this tackle, Kahari Jones would be running for another 20 yards because he had a whole lot of daylight in front of him. Look at, look at this, look at the zone. I mean, take a look at that. Now watch 59, not being fooled by a little bit of a head dude. Takes it, comes back in there. Big tackle by number 59. Speaking of 59, that was the yardage for Winnipeg's passing attack in the first half. In their first drive of the second half, Jones passed for 58 yards, 30 on the touchdown to Stiegel. And that's why there's four quarters to this wonderful game. Second short, Bill Pod drilled by Musica. Won't get there. It'll be a loss. Or Musica, the middle linebacker, replacing Willie Fells today. The native of Saskatoon with a big play. Well, that is just a big play by number 27, getting his third start. I mean, he's just, just going to fight right through here. Look at this, wrap him up, and then not allow him to twist forward. Helped by Mark Word, 
pulling him down, but but they gave him a generous forward progress spot and a first down. Short drop Jones. Whoops. For Gordon, the out, and it's complete near the first down stick. Trying to jiggle his way to the first down. He came up, it looks like, inches short. Well, the nice thing, I mean, look, he's just working against Nicholas Harper, but he comes back into the ball, and look where the ball is thrown. I mean, he adjusted that football so well. It's underthrown, but Robert Gordon goes down to make the catch. That close to a first down for the nine-year veteran, Gordon, who in his last game at his against Hamilton at his best of the year, 165 yards. And in that game, Chris, he came out with a suspected concussion, missed a great deal of time in the game. Hamilton rallied to tie. He came back in the final minute, caught a 36-yard pass, and set up the winning field goal. Oh, he gets it done out there. I mean, he's, he's had more needles in him than an acupuncture doll, than a voodoo witch doll, and he still comes out play after play. Second and short, and Jones, and Jones plunging for the first down. We're told Marcus Howell tweaked an, an ankle, but is expected to be back. Well, Winnipeg going for the surest thing right there with it being second and short. Almost wondering if they were going to do another thing like they did in the first half where they go deep, knowing that they only have a short yardage play. They're not going to take a chance. Let's keep this drive alive. Do what we have to do to put some more points on the board. Well, you got a glimpse of a real warrior, Brett McNeil, the left guard, playing hurt, but savoring this postseason game. Jones, in trouble, throws it up for grabs, and it's intercepted into the hands of Gerald Vaughn. At the bottom of the pile, Vaughn comes up with the ball. Well, I tell you what, Chris, Kahari Jones, has played like a veteran. But this is a ball that he should not have thrown. I know you want to make big plays, you want to create an opportunity to get big plays, but you're in trouble right now. Throw the ball away. See, now they take him away, he comes back in now. Now you're running into trouble. You're running into three guys that are gonna lay a lick on you, Phil Brick and Montford right there. Don't try to force a situation. He does, the ball gets jostled around and Vaughn comes up with the interception. That ball hit the back of another Tiger Cat defender, which kept it in play. I wouldn't mind another look though. I'm not absolutely convinced that ball didn't hit the turf. And there is a flag down as Jones considers one he'd like to have back. Well, let's take one more look, and it's always great up here to get three looks. Winnipeg. Kind of hard to tell from that angle to hit the ground, but I mean those are those are definite killers because of the fact that you're, you're you know you're moving the, the the drive previous Winnipeg put some points on the board. They're starting to do some things with some success, and then you force a situation. You try and gamble where you shouldn't gamble. Penalty marker was for too many men against the Winnipeg defense. Ball at midfield. First down, pitch to Williams. He gets four off the left side, 6-12 remaining. In the third quarter, Ticats operating against the wind, and they'll have it in the fourth. Well, that's why this quarter is such a key quarter. But I gotta also give credit to Winnipeg right now. Every game they've come in, the last three times they played Hamilton, Winnipeg has lost their composure. Even in the game they won, the two games they won at home, they've taken way too many penalties. They've been really disciplined today of not taking unnecessary penalties. Most penalty yards against in the league this year. Second and six. McManus floats it up, and Morreale was being held up by Dave Donaldson. Well, Morreale and Dave Donaldson got all tangled up, and it was almost like they were trying to get out of each other's way. As a result, when Morreale tries to find the football in the air. Winnipeg number two, first down. 
We talked about the fact that you've got to find the football in the air, not only as a receiver, but as a defender. It doesn't happen here. You're going to watch at the end of this play. Danny Mack throws it up. Now, the two particular combatants in this case, Morielli Donaldson, chest to chest, almost like a ballroom waltz. They're trying to separate, but unfortunately too late, and the flag is thrown. Gibbs McManus, a fresh set of downs at the Winnipeg 35. Williams, straight up the gut. Well, nice job, Lamar McGrace, coming and filling that hole quickly. And he's fired up. He's going over to the bench, the Hamilton Tire Cats, his former employers, letting them know, hey, I can still get the job done. But Williams just firing straight through. And again, 36 showing why. You're going to derail a tank, you better take it out at the bottom, on the legs. Williams telling McGregs, you're not going to slow me down. Second down. There's Morreale near the first down stick as he's driven out by Donaldson. And Chris, it just shows you how big a play is. I know we talked about the throw, the errant throw, maybe the poor decision by Kahari, but all of a sudden it has ignited the Hamilton Tiger Cat offense who have now driven the ball into Winnipeg territory. Not only that, they're also running time off the clock in this third quarter, Winnipeg's quarter with the win. Absolutely, 4.36 left in the third quarter as they measure shortly for to see if another first down. Let's take a look at this big play again. Mahari decides to try and throw the ball just before he gets hit by Monfort and Philbrick. And Take another look at that angle, and you almost wonder if the ball did not indeed hit the turf before Gerald Vaughn corralled it, but right now it's a foregone conclusion because moot point, it's done, it's history. Just short of the first down, the Cats will have to gamble, but third and inches at the Winnipeg 25. Under four and a half minutes left. The ball came loose. The Bombers say they're on it. And let's wait as they unpile. Uh, I'm going to tell you what, Chris. Great penetration by the interior of the defensive line of Winnipeg. Four standing to go sideways. Winnip then the rest of Winnipeg's defense came and caught Danny from the side, knocked him backwards. It all depend on the mark. The, the linesman gives them, but I don't know. I don't know on this one. They didn't cough it up with a fumble, but did they on the sneak? Boy, they didn't need much at all, and they didn't get it. Uh, that is a big, big play by the Bomber defense. You cannot relax, even on a short yardage when you only need less to go than one yard, because it'll come back and bite you in the backside. Two teams have traded turnovers in this third quarter. Both Hamilton turnovers today on down. Well, it all starts right here. you got to get some push from your interior guys. Benny Goods, Alfred Payton do a great job. And then you're going to get the side right here. Look at number 98. 98 does not allow Danny McManus to have a second opportunity to try and stretch for that first down. And Ron Warner. Rookie on the... Defensive line making a huge play to give the Winnipeg offense the ball again. And Phil Pot for four yards off the right side. And just over four minutes remaining for the Winnipeg offense with the wind in this third quarter. Well, if you watch the ball being run by Corey Philpott, and you see the guys come off the pile, off the tackling pile, one name we really haven't mentioned much today, Chris, and I think they've done a pretty good job so far with a little over a quarter of a minute to go with Joe Monfort. They've done a pretty good job on the big guy. Alawanibi, the top Canadian and offensive lineman nominee from Winnipeg. Here's a pass off the outstretched fingertips of Stiegel, and that will bring up third down. Well, nice job, but again, we just talked about Joe. Joe Monford forced this ball to be thrown a little early on this play. Just takes him in, goes to the outside, gets a little separation from Sean Woodson, but the ball 
throw it a little early, and as a result, a little ahead of Stiegel, and he's unable to come up with the catch. Well, Westwood has flourished with the wind at his back so far today. But as you say, only 27 yards into the wind, and they will be kicking the wind the next quarter. This ball handled on the fly by Aikens, and he'll run it back into Winnipeg territory. There is a flag on the field, but he took it on the dead run and brought it back 28 yards. The frozen tundra of Commonwealth Stadium, the second half of our semifinal doubleheader this afternoon. Mark Lee, Len Suter, Steve Armitage getting set as the BC Lions meet the Edmonton Eskimos for the right to play the Calgary Stampeders in the Western Final. And a holding call against Hamilton. Charge to Michael O'Shea negates that 28-yard punt return by Aikens and brings the ball back to the 31 of Hamilton. So a huge penalty against the Tiger Cats. Absolutely, Chris. I mean, where they would have had the ball to where they have it now. That's about a 40-yard penalty. Here's McManus, the quick look in to Flutie incomplete. Harold Nash was all over Flutie, didn't allow him to bring it in. Just a little slanting pattern. You know you're going to get coverage from Harold Nash. Goes to the middle. Ball is on the money. Mr. Reliable Darren Flutie usually comes up with these. But as you say, Harold Nash with the hand in there, raking the ball out, not allowing Darren Flutie to come in with the catch. Nice job by number double zero. They play man-to-man -man most of the time, and Nash has the job of shutting down Flutie. Big play, second and ten, and McManus stripped of the ball. Seth Dittman gets on at the left tackle, maintaining possession for Hamilton, but the Tiger catch must kick it away. Well, another big play by the bottom defense. Alfred Payton. Just going to be working. He's down at the bottom right here. He's working against Seth Dittman. Little arm knockdown. Knocks the offensive lineman's arms down. Gets him off him. And then just beats the He just knocks the arms down. See, so knocks him down. Gets around him. Strips the ball from Danny McManus. And very fortunate that Seth Dittman, the man who got beat on the play, was able to recover the football. And he brought in the old Chris Walby tapes of the glory days of the Bombers from the early 90s for his teammates to watch this week. And he is one of the veteran leaders of this club. Oz Baldiston into the wind, not a good kick. There's a no yards call, but Albert Johnson has designs on a big return. Dragged down by Trevor Shaw, and Winnipeg has the ball in Hamilton territory when we come back. Marcus Washington is the injured Winnipeg Blue Bomber. Just a 27-yard punt by Osbaldiston into that breeze. So it remains a, a large factor this afternoon. Well, and that's why big plays by the defense, knowing full well that you've only got another two minutes with the win, forcing Ozzie to kick into the stiff breeze. As a result, now your offense, after that return by Albert Johnson, gets great field position, Chris. Bombers lead by one, but really the onus on them in this last 2-0-1 of the third quarter to pad that lead. Well, you know what? You're looking at the situation right now, even where you're starting right now, of at least coming away with an attempted field goal. You should come away with three. Now you know you're in the zone that, hey, let's put it down. Let's see if we can get seven. Let's see if we can get a touchdown out of this. Well, Kahari Jones made a critical mistake the last time. He's out past McManus today, but that one interception was costly. Has to dance out of trouble. And then the feet first slide at the 31 to get five tough yards. Well, it's a good thing that he did that old hook slide because number 59, Mike O'Shea, was going to do the old take off the head at the shoulders tackle right here. He just slides underneath Mike O'Shea on that play. But again, great athletic ability of Kahari to get away from the pressure. 
And that mobility has been more of an asset in the second half. Second down, six to go. Jones looking deep. Oh! Loves to wear it out to G-Roy. Simon has it. He made the play this time. What a catch. Out dueling Orlando Steinauer. So G-Roy Simon out of the doghouse and into the penthouse. Well, <laughs> and you know, it goes both ways. The elevator goes up and it falls down a lot quicker. But I tell you what. As you say, G. Ray, not so simple. Simon, you figure you got him covered on this play. Orlando Steinhauer turns and sees the football. Actually, he thinks he's going to come away with the interception. The coverage was there, but Simon would have none of it and takes the ball away from him for a big, big play by this Bomber offense. Bold touchdown catches in this third quarter by Winnipeg, really thefts by the receivers. That is, you know, it comes down to who wants it more. And you hate to break it down to something so simple, but the coverage is there. I mean, Orlando Steinhauer sees the football. He turns around. He knows he's got an opportunity to make a play on this ball. At the very least, he's thinking, I can knock it down. But and he takes the ball away from him. That's just a great reception by the second year guy, Leroy Simon. Listen in, let's do it, baby. We're coming back. And he wants another on. shot at Winnipeg, or Montreal, after a three touchdown game earlier this year. Steinhauer had played a flawless game until then. Well, you know what? That's one he's gonna want back. I mean, he did everything textbook. He had the coverage, he was down the field, he saw the football, he made a play on the football, it just won those facts that G-Roy Simon out grappled for him and took the football away. Kahari Jones, this half, four for six, 98 yards, and a couple of touchdowns. You see Alfred Payton, the man who got them the football back. They're stripping the ball from Danny McManus, the last defensive series. Excited with G. Roy Simon. Ronald Williams in the final minute of his third quarter, crashing across the 40-yard line. And Chris with 37 seconds left, and you know you have the eight point lead the biggest thing is Hamilton knows you know what we have the win in the fourth this was the touchdown moments ago or the drop well you can see that was one he wanted back and you know he went in the halftime and said if you don't give up on me because I can still make the play at Kahari he loves all these four receivers he's got and I tell you what this is a great catch just taking the ball away from a guy, as you said, Chris, up to that point, it played flawless defense for Orlando Steiner. Clock running down in this third quarter. McManus has to rally the troops, and he's got Andrew Gregg. Third catch, drops the ball. Brian Clark on it, and the Blue Bombers have it, and they certainly have the momentum. They get the football right back. Another big play. The ball is stripped. A nice job initially from Andrew Gregg getting separation from the defender. Hamilton making the catch and then trying to do something with it after. The yards after catch theory. Takes off with the football. Bomber defenders, though, they gang tackle him. See, he comes back into the middle right now. Now, as he's running, Brandon Hamilton, the man who was beaten on the play for the pass completion, strips the football and another big play for that Bomber defense. Hamilton turned the ball over 64 times this year, and it's coming back to bite them again. Final play, third quarter, barring a penalty, and Stiegel gets it into Hamilton territory at the 49. And that wraps up an eventful third quarter for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Brian Clark with the fumble recovery after a pair of touchdowns, Stiegel and Simon. And it's Winnipeg by eight, heading to quarter number four. Well, this game turned dramatically in the third quarter as the high-powered passing attack of the Bombers finally got 
Well, we talked the about the fact that it's a game of making big plays in the first half. The Bombers were not making them. In the third quarter, they were making them. And even after Kahari Jones made a poor decision, he came right back to air that ball out again. And great catch by Simon. Look at the blood on here. I mean, he's got blood all over. That's not mascara, people. That's one tough son of a. And I wish I could say it on the air. But this guy, you have, you just got to respect this guy. This is a warrior. His finger's there. He has his finger totally split. He's got it taped. You talked to him yesterday. Well, he was spilled the last two weeks by Gary Sawatsky, and he said, I'm sore, but I got to take every snap today. And he's been in there. We're told Scott Russell passed out when he saw that split finger out at the Winnipeg bench. Built by the ball carrier. Well, I tell you what, he's just getting it done. I mean, that's that's the kind of guy. Here's a guy, you know, he's got his arm taped up. He's had a rotator cuff problem. He's had a knee problem. He's had major surgery on him. And now you look at this finger right here. I mean, if you look, look at the blood on him. He's just covered. That is, if you ever want to have a picture of yourself, here's to follow and show your kids what you were like. That's the kind of picture you want to show them. That was a tough guy. Second and nine for Winnipeg. Point lead, they'd love to add to it. Jones looking downfield, and it was nearly picked off through the hands of Chris Shelley, intended for Robert Gordon. Well, I actually thought he had Gordon on that play, Chris, because it looked like the ball was perfectly delivered, and it just didn't come up with the catch. Sits back here, but again, look at the protection. Nice job of Corey Philpott taking Gonzalo Floyd down. There's the ball right over the hands. Robert Gordon almost thought he could have came up with that catch. Chris Schelling almost comes up with an interception. The biggest thing is, though, they stopped the drive, and it's becoming a point now where you want to keep the ball out of Winnipeg's hands offensively because they're starting to make things happen. This game may come down to how Troy Westwood punts against the wind. They've got three men on side here, though. They put it up in the air. It's going to be a jump ball. Those men were on side for the Bombers. Who's going to come up with it? Juhas got to it first and knocked it out. Well, we do have a flag on the field, but an interesting Bomber alignment. Well, I tell you what, Chris, they may, that may be just the fact the referee's not recognizing that situation. But, boy, talk about a coach pulling everything out of the old proverbial playbook. Three guys behind the kicker, which makes those three guys eligible to go head first for that football, not having to give up that five yard rule. Now, was it an illegal alignment without an end? It was just a 16 yard putt, but. Well, absolutely, Chris. You have to have so many guys in the line of scrimmage. Illegal procedure. Winnipeg, no end. That penalty is declined. The other infraction, there's no infraction. The man was onside. It's first down Hamilton. Not a bad gamble, though, by, by the Bombers, who really haven't had much in the way of a punting game well, against the wind anyway. Kicking against the wind, absolutely. The ball's going to go up. They got to like what Troy did. He, he, you know, he spiraled that kick straight up. It didn't go far, but it allowed the guys that lined up behind him to have an opportunity to try and come up with that football. Something you can do when you enjoy that kind of field position, not something you want to do back deep in your own zone. Ronald Williams, and he spun off the field. Got some extra yardage when it looked like he was going to be nailed right at the line. Well, you know, I'm, I, I hate to use cliches, but this is gut check time. Let's see what your team has really made. Let's test your medal if you want. I mean, this is what it's all about right now. There's only 15 minutes and counting. Well, 13 minutes left to see who goes home, pulls out the skates, and who gets to go to Montreal. Defending Great Cup champions will have to come from behind. Stunner count by McManus. Who throws downfield and Greg pulls it in. There were flags. Winnipeg was offside. We presume. And we also assume that it will be declined. Well, I tell you, I like this Andrew Gig Rig kid. I mean, he just offside. Winnipeg 92. That's declined. He's First got step. some of the softest hands I've ever seen on a receiver. I mean, he just cradles that ball in and makes it look so effortlessly as he goes up and catches the ball. You never really see him juggle the football. Look at him. Just pulls it and he's covered. Good coverage by Real Wells right there, but just makes it look so easy. 
at midfield, a first down for the Tiger Cats. McManus steps up and delivers low into double coverage. Both Nash and Europe were all over Archie Emerson. Well, and I'm gonna I think this is a good throw by Danny Mack because I think if this ball is any higher, I think Nash or Europe has an opportunity to come up with an interception here. But they close the pocket. See how they force him in? They force him back up inside. As a result, he's right beside Benny Goods. He just throws the ball low, but that's one of those cases, I think, Chris, that it's a good throw. Second and 10 for the Tiger Cats. Man, numbers on the day. There's great fifth catch. Andrew Gregg turned it upfield in a hurry. So despite the fumble on the last drive, McMahon is going back to his Canadian wideout. And just an under route. Just takes his man and comes back inside. Timing route, McManus, bam. There's the ball on the money. We talked about the soft hands of this gentleman, Andrew Grigg. Catches the football, takes care of number one first, which is catching the football, then turns it upfield. So the Cats are on the move. Down to the bomber, 38. Pass over the middle off the fingertips of Flutie. Incomplete. Well, nice job of trying to get the ball to him. It goes off the fingertips. And anytime you see that tip drill or that ball deflected, either by the defender or the receiver, it always has the possibility to come back and haunt you being an interception and it just falls past the outstretched hands of Tom Europe to safety. This park has been a graveyard for the Bombers in the past. In fact, their last two visits outscored 108 to 21. But they have had success, Chris, in the playoffs. Here's Ronald Williams rumbling for another first down to the 27. What a great call at that time. Second and 10, everybody in the house is expecting the pass. He calls the draw, and this is what it's about, Chris. It's about the magic man, Danny Mack, never getting rattled. This is the veteran savvy of this man calling the game. Remember, he calls his own plays in here. He knows what he wants, he knows what's gonna be comfortable. Nice play selection in that play. And calling 24's number has been effective. 81 yards on the day. First down, back to Williams. Right side of Warner, drags him down from behind, limiting the gain to a couple. Williams with the touchdown for Hamilton this afternoon. Well, he's been a real workhorse. Ronald Williams is getting his hands on the football on numerous occasions today, and he's making it work. He may be stuffed, but they don't give up on it. The next time they come back, he breaks one. Williams with the second best rushing total all time in Tiger Cat history this year. Only Jimmy Edwards had more in a single season. There's a long out to Corey Grant, who caught the first ball thrown by McManus today. And he has another first down. And this Hamilton march continues. And Chris, that's when you know that Danny McManus and this Hamilton offense are starting to are starting to come together because he's spreading the ball around so magnificently right now. Not only going to one side, not, throw, not only handing the ball off to Williams, but he's spreading around. Corey Grant with a second catch of the afternoon. Griggs, who's got five. Flutie, he's making everybody a part of this offense. Under 10 minutes to go. First down from the 14. Williams again. And he's nailed at the 11. Jerron Bolden moved up to well, make that's a hit. And Chris, that's a nice job of Benny Goods and company stuffing it at initial point of contact, forcing Ronald Williams to change his direction. And as he does, Jerron Bolden comes and puts the finishing touches on it. Last Winnipeg victory in the playoffs was back in 94 against the Ottawa Rough Riders. Benny Goods digs in, second and seven. McManus for the end zone, and he hit the upright. Off the bar with the flag down. Well, he changed his cadence again, and I think he's caught him jumping again. 
He does. That's the case. And that's what you want to do. Never sit on the same snap count. Go on one, go on three, go on two. Don't ever let the defense Outside. start to get comfortable. Winnipeg 98. Second down repeat. Ron Warner drawn offside that time. One thing you know about Danny McManus, despite an eight-point deficit, the pulse rate doesn't change. Well, this is a play where he's originally going to go. He makes a move to the inside. Pretty good coverage. He runs right into Dave Donaldson. But unfortunately, the ball hit the crossbar. Second and two, tenth play of the drive. McManus, and he threw that one away. I think he had designs on running there. I think it was, again, one of those play, play action. Do a little bootleg, try and fool the defense. Unfortunately, they were not fooled. They did not bite on the fake. Jerome Bolden, number 21, coming up to lend support. Forcing Danny Mack to throw that ball away, not allowing Corey Grant to even have an opportunity to come up with that catch. He turns and looks upfield, and he's looking Jerron Bolden in the eye. Well, 21 was not fooled. He played his position perfectly. Stay there. Quarterback comes. Take it away from him. Osbaldiston to get the Tiger Cats a little closer. And he converts the chip shot to make it a five-point Winnipeg lead. 8.26 to play in the fourth quarter. They're warming up at Commonwealth Stadium. There's Nilon Green. Footing could be a real issue in that game. And you know the defenses will be slip sliding to contain both Nilon Green and Damon Allen, although the conditions from that picture look pretty favorable for the Western Semi coming up following our game. One team vying to play Montreal in the East Final. The other game trying to produce an opponent for the Calgary Stampeders in the West. Winnipeg takes over at their own 35. Short drop and a quick hitter to G. Roy Simon. A completion at the 44 and a gain of nine for the man who has put Winnipeg ahead in this game. Well, we talked about, I mean, one of the things that people don't realize, we talk about Milt Stegall, we talk about Robert Gordon, but quietly, G. Roy Simon is becoming a go-to guy to himself. I mean, four touchdown catches in the last three games that he's played, really being productive out there. I mean, it's just another weapon. Second and short. They'll go to Phil Pot. First down and an extra six as Phil Pot dashes to the 53. Well, the thing about him is he's got such great change of direction, Chris. The hole, he makes a side step. Little stutter step to the left. Watch him just take a step. Now he goes to the left. Now see that hole? He just squeezes through. But his speed, the fact that he, once he gets an open territory, he's gone. I mean, he just makes something out of nothing. Great job to get the first down. O'Shea in the defense trying to get the football back. First down, the toss to Phil Pot. Nothing doing. Right into the arms of Joe Mumford. Well, if I'm an offense coordinator, I may not want to be running the Joe Mumford side anyway. Most of the time you'll see teams will run to the weak side or away from their predominant rush end. In this case, Joe Mumford come back the other side, and he will have none of it, as you say, beats the block, comes in there. This is the big play right now with only six something left. Big defensive stand as Hitchcock tries to get the fans fired up. Loss of one, it's second and 11. Here comes the rush. Joe trying to track him down, word will. Second sack of the game for Mark Word as Montford flushed him to Word's side. Well, I'll tell you what, you got to have both sides of your defense working. Joe Montford with the initial pressure forces Kahari to pull it down and go. I mean, he sits back, sits back, knows he's down. Now look at CEC, 53 is going to fight through that block. But number 97, good speed. Nice tackle right by the head, takes him down. And that is a big, big play for the Hamilton defense, forcing Westwood to punt into this win. Low snap. Westwood a high punt that just stays up. 
and flags down as it's taken on the bounce. That was just a 20-yard punt by Westwood. And the Hamilton defense gives it back to their offense. Bob Cameron, Troy Westwood conferring, just a 20-yard punt. The last was 16, albeit they planned on sidekick, but against the wind, the guy in his 12th game as the punter is having some trouble. It's all about dropping the ball. McManus back to work, swings it to Ronald Williams over the back of the field. And that's a first down, 5.26 to go. And it's still a five-point bomber lead. Well, they moved the ball last time, had to settle for a field goal. I mean, if they move it now and have to settle for three, if they get it into that territory, I mean, they're still going to be short. So they got to start thinking. We're pretty close to time we got to start thinking major. Tom Europe's doing. Well, absolutely. <laughs> but auditioning what, for the I, quarterback job in Hamilton. Well, you know what? They didn't want to use their timeout. Offside. Winnipeg 13. First down repeated. So he just runs to the back right now. Actually, I've never seen this before in all my years. He just <laughs> had to turn around and take the snap. Give me the snap. Okay. A little intentional offside. <laughs> Doesn't got the great hands back there. Okay, you might want to take a few lessons from Danny Mack on <laughs> looking at football into your hands, but it's a good way to save a timeout. Problem is, it does give Hamilton a first and five situation. Williams hit by Brian Clark and not much there. But as you say, because of the penalty, it now becomes second and short. About three yards to go, and they sent the big boys in the tight end. And we saw earlier in the game, Chris, the first quarter, they stayed with this double tight end and ran the ball effectively with the win. Well, I think there's enough time here that Hamilton could play for two field goals and win because in this win, as Baldison could kick them from midfield, maybe beyond. Williams. Yeah! And he will be. Stop short of the first down, and sure on Lancaster's got a decision. Well, remember the last time we saw this, they gambled and Danny Mack came up short. They're going to measure again as we see calling in for the arch sticks. It's one of those situations, Chris, that I still think if they do come up short, you got to wonder if they're going to go for it, but I still think you go for it. I don't think you stop when you're under a yard short, you should never be stopped. But they are in a position where they could put points on the board. But you're right. You're the defending Grey Cup champions. You don't make that. You don't deserve to go on. No, just a straight handoff, double tight. Give it to Ronald Williams. See, Alfred Payton is the guy that makes the block or makes a tackle coming from the backside. Alfred uh, Payton has made a couple of big plays today. He's turned this game up a notch. For the playoff game and uh, forcing decisions, and here we go again. Well, let's see if Winnipeg can turn it over again on downs. Williams, right side, no question. When Ronald Williams gets ahead of steam up and takes that football, his momentum is going to carry him for the first down. Just a little bit of a wishbone. Get it, guys, out there. You see number 66, Mike Mihalik. Comes in the game, he substitutes with Gary Brown, the left guard. Another big kid on that offensive line. You really do have some good offensive linemen in Hamilton. 3.20 to go. Oh. McManus steps up and delivers Archie Amerson. Inside the 15, his first catch of the game. First catch of the game, and can you say big play? Because you know they had to get the ball to number nine. Number nine has broken the backs of more teams than probably Flutie has in some game. But I tell you what, 
he becomes, he's almost one of those guys that you think is invisible, and all of a sudden, there he is. Number nine pops up with a big catch at the, at the biggest time. He led the Cats in receiving this year, most of it done in the first half of the season. 3.05 to play. Dave Ritchie agitated the, the bench. He wants to get the right defensive alignment in here now as it's crunch time. A 28-yard catch by Archie Amerson, his first of the game. Well, basically, they take the middle linebacker, Ryland Wickman, out, bring another defensive back in. Here we go. First and 10 from the Winnipeg 12. Clock running. Under three minutes to go. Champs down by five. McManus looks to the end zone, and Morielli dumped, flagged down. Second time today, Morielli has drawn the flag. Well, this is, I don't think there's any doubt about this. I mean, there's a lot of coverage, a lot of guys covering Mike Morielli, but in the end, they give him that unnecessary shove. He goes to the turf, and the flag is thrown, and now they're going to debate whether the ball is catchable because remember if it's not catchable it's only a 10 yard penalty. If the ball is catchable it'll be first and goal at the one. Not getting an indication yet. Forward pass interference. Winnipeg 37. First down. First. Well they're deeming obviously that the ball was not catchable Chris. They moved it up and they're going to give him first down. At the six and a half yard line, which is maybe a bit of a break for the Winnipeg team right there because I, I don't know how you can say it's not casual and you don't know if the guy can get there because he's on the ground. McManus did throw into triple coverage, but I don't think the officials took that into consideration. So it's first and goal from the six. The pitch to Williams has to cut back. And he's fortunate to get a yard. You know, the way that Williams was holding on to that football after that pitch, I was thinking he was going to throw the football. I wondered that too. A little surprising. Maybe they were going to try and pull out a trick play out of there. Ron Lancaster Jr., the offensive coordinator, maybe he said, I've got something that may fool this Winnipeg defense. It's not a recommended way of carrying the football at this point in the game. Dave Ritchie had his heart broken here two years ago. Second and goal from the five. McManus dumps it for Morielli. What a play, Harold Nash. He climbed the ladder to knock it away. And it's third down. Danny McManus. Tried to put the touch on the football. Saw initially what he thought was an open receiver. Just kind of put a soft touch on it. Look, a little throw right there, but as you say, Harold Nash knocks it down, and now we see that they're going for it. Third and five. They are not going to go for the field goal, which would get them within two with 2.16 to go. Ron Lancaster's strategy is punch it in, or else we've got Winnipeg backed up. Third and goal, big play. McManus in trouble, gets it away. Wide open, touchdown, Amerson. Chris, I don't know what. Unbelievable that this man, Archie Amerson, would be that wide in the back of the end zone. But Danny McManus avoids the sack, steps up, allows himself to find that little bit of extra time needed to make the play, and then finds Archie Anderson sitting in the back of the end zone with no defender around him. Obviously a broken coverage, and what a time to have your coverage break down. McManus looks to his wrist for a play on the two-point convert. They now lead by one. This to make it a full field goal lead. 
for two. McManus, and he goes back to Averson. Or check that, Aikens for two, flag down. You may have offensive pass interference against Archie Averson. As Harold Nash has got his helmet removed from his head, he's showing the ref, see? I didn't put it, I didn't pass interference, Hamilton 81. Repeat Condor. Well, they're gonna call Tony, Tony Aikens with the penalty. I saw Archie working on Harold Nash, I, and I don't know about 81 being the culprit there, but anyway, Harold Nash running to the referee with helmet in hand. So it marks the ball back at the 15. They'll have to do it again. Well, this just makes it a little bit of a tougher situation, Chris. Obviously, you're working from the 15-yard line, but sometimes they like it because they feel they have more field to use. Three receivers right side. McManus looking left, batted down. Nearly picked up. And so, unsuccessful, but Hamilton's got the lead by one. To an early celebratory mood here. One point lead for the Cats. 2.10 to go after the touchdown catch by Archie Amerson. And the Bombers will have to work against the wind to regain the lead. Has to go back into the end zone. And Marcus Howe across the 15. Not so sure he shouldn't have conceded a single point there. Get a little better field position. Well, I think it's one of those situations also, Chris, that both Marcus Howe and Albert Johnson III have returned kickoffs for touchdowns. But look at how wide open he is. And look at the big hug by Andrew Grigg. Lancaster's reaction, obviously, one of. Well, he's not even that. He just wants everybody off the field. Get everybody on it. He doesn't want to take a penalty right now. Dave Richard can't believe it. Out again. Looked like they had McManus sacked. Instead, it's a catch in the back of the end zone. Can Winnipeg respond? The Harry Jones, Robert Gordon with a catch. Down by Music at the 31. That's a good start for the Bombers. Now, how much of a play will the wind come into a factor for a field goal attempt? That's the question now. Normally, if there's no wind, you know, you get it inside there about a 40-yard, the 40-yard line, you can try a field goal. But with this wind, I think you're looking at about 20 yards closer. Westwood's longest of the year is 56. 36 seems like it might be the outer limit today. Kahari Jones goes wide side, almost picked off by Chris Schellen. G. Roy Simon, the intended receiver. And Chris Schellen reminded me of a kid playing Pee Wee football. After he made the play, he ran back 100 miles an hour back into the huddle. Hey, that was me that made the play. But just a nice job of reacting to the ball once it's in the air again. Look at number 30. Almost. Not only knocks it away, but almost comes up with a big interception. With 139 left, might have sealed their fate, but now the crowds are going to get into it. I don't think we'll see Troy Westwood punt again today. Second down and 10. Jones in trouble. Gets out of it. And an air throw incomplete, intended for Phil Pop. And Jones got out of trouble and he didn't even realize he got out of trouble because Joel Monford had him lined up and almost knocked the ball away from Kahari Jones. You're just gonna see him coming from the top right here, just gonna work around. Now watch, see, oh, he tries to go for the ball. Kahari doesn't even see that. Pulls it back in and very fortunate that he did not turn that over. Well, I'm surprised, Chris. Minute 32 left and they are going to punt the well, ball. Well, let's just not say that. They're lining up looking like, remember Troy Westwood, they're right now, everybody on the Hamilton side saying, make sure he kicks the football. Now, Harold Nash, double zero, has just, he's checked up and he's lining out wide now. Against the wind again, where he's averaged 24.2 yards. And he is kicking it away. His best kick, and it goes over Aikens, who has trouble with it. And it turns out to be a better decision than we might have thought. 
Well, the decision by Dave Ritchie looks a lot better after a 45-yard punt, but will they get the ball back? Well, that's the thing. I mean, right now, first down basically kills the clock. You, you know, if I'm Winnipeg's defense, I'm, I'm pretty much expecting the double tight that Ronald Williams is going to carry the football. You called it. Just a couple. They do have a timeout. And, and that's they, a stop the clock. And that's a big factor, because right now they know if they stop them, they have an opportunity to get the football. You can see Tom Europe singling timeout right now. Take their timeout. Now you're basically putting the ball in the Hamilton's hands. I mean, they obviously have to control their own destiny now. Now, to, we saw in a, in a second and long situation today, when everybody thought in the park that Danny was going to throw it up in the air, he handed off the draw play. And Ronald Williams picked up a first down. But the big thing is, they know right now, they're in that huddle, and they're saying, we make the first down, we got an opportunity to kill the clock, as Winnipeg is now used to timeout. We but, put, excuse me, Chris, but we have players shuttling back and forth from both huddles. It's like a fire drill out here, and McManus had a chance during the timeout to confer with Cody Ledbetter. And, Ron Lancaster, Milt Stiegel agitated. Will he get his hands on the ball again today? Minute 20 on the clock, it's second and long. And they throw a flea flicker, perhaps. Averson down, what was that? Back inside the 15. Well, I do not like that call. Anytime you're putting a situation where you're gonna put your offense back from where you originally are in the first place, I don't like. Go with what works. Don't go, don't, you know, I don't think you're in a situation where you need to pull plays out of the magic hat. Uh, this is just a great play by Ron Warner, not being fooled. But what you've actually done is you've lost 20 yards. Now you force it was a loss of 15. Well, and Ozzie's got a punt from farther back now. And right now, Winnipeg will get the ball at least 50 yards on the Hamilton side. And you got Albert Johnson, the man who can break at any time. Doing the receiving. Osbolnison stands a yard or two deep in his end zone. 15 yard loss on that unusual play. Albert Johnson at his 52. Gets by the first man, steps out at the 50, and there are 50 seconds left on the clock. And I said they'd probably get the ball, and that's exactly where they get it. On Hamilton's 50-yard line with 50 seconds left. Can you say double 50? He's checking the flags. Is the wind less of a factor now than it's been today? 45-yard punt by Westwood into the wind. Definitely his best. Well, with 50 seconds, Chris, I still think to be secure, you need about 20 yards. That would make it about a 37-yarder. A one-point lead by Hamilton. Kahari Jones, a couple of first downs from changing that. Quick hitter, Stiegel, and they're down to the 40. And you saw Stiegel on the bench, and you got the impression he wanted the football. And that's what you want. You know you've got go-to guys. You know you've got guys like Stiegel, Gordon, guys who can get it done. Each taking turns during the regular season and making the play that allow you to have an opportunity to win the football game. Stiegel, with this case, finding the little opening in the zone coverage, making the catch, or getting the first down. Now they still have, as you say, Chris, three downs to work with. Very important. What do you think? They have to get inside the 30? I think that if you get to the 30, you're still kicking a 37-yarder. Is the win as big a factor? That'll be the question on the field. The first down, just inside the 40. Draw play, Bill Pot. Not much. Scott Russell telling us that Bob Cameron on the sidelines guesstimates that a 40-yard field goal would be about the max in these conditions for Westwood. Well, remember the, set, the ball is set seven yards back from the snap. They need so five more. Absolutely. Second down. Jones, he'll sprint out. 
And he gets inside the 30 and has a first down. 27 seconds left. Do you know what? I, I'm going to tell you something that went through my mind like a big flash. And I mean, a lot of things go through my mind. Tom Burgess took off in the Eastern Final. Near the end of the game, allowed Trevor Kenner to win the game on a field goal. And I got a feeling, baby, it's heebie-jeebies up here, but hey, it could happen. It's doable now. They're trying to get in closer for Westwood. Down to the 26, so you're looking at a 33-yarder, 13 seconds left. Well, and they're also going to place the ball. Make sure the ball goes in the middle. And you can see they're sending them on. And here it is. This is the biggest kick. Forget about all the games earlier in the season. Troy hitting the upright, missing a cup. This is the big one. They put it down. They did the job. The bomber offense did what they had to do to give them the opportunity here. Now it's up to number seven. Right in the middle. He struggled at the start of the year. There are three, four men in the back of the end zone that will punt it out if Westwood misses. Here it is for the win. And Troy Westwood's got it. And there was never a doubt about the distance. Two seconds left, and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers are that close to dethroning the Grey Cup champions. We got two seconds. Two seconds. Well, and you know what? Here's a man who we saw, as you say, a couple years ago here, watched Ozzy kick it and fall down to his knees. Couldn't believe it. Unbelievable. But you got to give this guy credit. Kahari Jones and the offense did what they had to do. They had to go. Now, how big a play, and I hate to pick on one play, Chris, but how big a play is that reverse to Archie Amerson when they lost 15 yards? 1993, Troy Westwood did it at home against Hamilton for an emotional win with his sidekick, Bob Cameron. Westwood had a horrendous start to the year, but has got better as the season goes on. And one of the biggest kicks of his life. And well, Dave Ritchie, you worried yesterday about the wind in the fourth quarter. Didn't want his heart broken by another Osbaldiston kick. One last Hail Mary, jump ball, it hits the turf, and this one is over. There will be a new Grey Cup champion in 2000. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers. The improbable season continues. Well, I tell you what, what a game. We saw it go back. It was a big play. We talked about it first, the first half, Chris. Winnipeg's second half made the plays. We saw Stegel, we saw everybody. Wow. Let's go down and join Scott Russell with one of the heroes. Absolutely one of the heroes. Here's Troy Westwood kick that one into the wind. Uh, tell us about it. Oh, it's been a long year, man. You know, I had a couple of uh, misses early that killed us. And, uh, I was just hoping and praying for a chance. This is such a huge win for the organization. I'd like to say hi to my wife, Mama Bear, and my mom, Pa. You were talking to your old pal Bob Cameron there, and uh, what were you saying as the, as the whole thing unfolded? How deep did you think you had to get? I said, if we get it to the 40, we'll have a chance, and anything on top of that's gravy. And, you know, all year, receivers and running backs all line. And Kahari Jones, you can't possibly understate what he's done to our team the last half of the season. He's just a, a diamond in the rough of a fine for us. Uh, from Winnipeg, you are, and uh, you look ahead to Montreal and the final. Uh, what do you think? Well, if there's one thing that we've proven beyond a doubt this year is that we can beat anybody in this league. We've had a couple of really tough games in Montreal, and all of us have been looking forward to the brawl in Montreal. Troy, congratulations. Good luck to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Thank you, sir. All right. Troy Westwood of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, and they win it 22 to 20 over the Grey Cup champion, Hamilton Tiger Cats. Very dramatic here at Iverwind Stadium. Now let's head to the West.